All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Apple atomic clock says six o'clock, so I like to start things on time. First thing I want to do is thank each and every one of you for taking your valuable time for being here tonight. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, before we start, first, uh, what a great staff here at this church, Purdue Bay United Methodist Church. And yeah, let's give them a hand. I, w I didn't know one of the pastors was going to be here, and I'm certainly glad he is because I'm going to call him up to bring the invocation. So if you'd uh, stand and join us for an invocation, then remain standing. We're going to do the pledge after. Pastor Bohm. Thank you, thank you. Thank you Commissioner Burgosh, and th thank you everyone for, for being here. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for Escambia County and for all who work in this county and for all the blessings you've given us. We ask now that you bless our meeting, guide our conversation so that your name is glorified in all, in all that we say and do. We pray this in your name, amen. Amen, thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Well, again, I'll just reiterate, I certainly would be remiss if I did not thank everyone for being here. There's a number of staff members that are present, um, and I really appreciate their support because they're the ones with all the information, and they're the ones uh, going to be able to answer most of your questions tonight. So without further ado, I will introduce the staff members that are here, and um, we'll just start right down from the top. Wes Marino is our administrator. Horace Jones is here. He's the director of planning and zoning. Drew Homer is the... Up, speak up again. Okay, this thing's at. Oh, oh, okay. All right. I thought you said speak up. All right. When I when I call you, please stand so they they can recognize or wave so everyone knows who you are. Jamie Higdon, Director of Public Works. Tim Day, Natural Resources Manager. Um, John Fisher is a Senior Planner. Wesley Hall is our Deputy Administrator. David Hero in the back, he's the community media relations person. Chris Phillips is our traffic engineer. Jeanette Correa and Allison Woodfin are David's assistants in CMR. Thank you for being here. Debbie Kenny, I couldn't do it without her. Where are you, Debbie? There's Debbie right there. She's my uh, legislative assistant. We'll use that term tonight. Mike Rhodes is the director of public, rec uh, public parks and rec. There he is. And then we have a couple of uh, elected officials here that I'm certainly going to recognize. Um, our sheriff, Chip Simmons, is here. Give it up for, sh for sheriff. And we're also very fortunate tonight. We have one of the most esteemed members of the judiciary locally, my brother, Circuit, Circuit Judge Gary Bragash, retired Marine. I also want to thank the sheriff's deputies that are here this evening providing security. This meeting, this, yeah, exactly. Let's give it up for them. Let's give it up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, and Debbie Bowers is the deputy administrator. I'm sorry she's here as well. There, there she is right in the front. All right. Debbie, welcome. Anyone else that I'm missing? Oh, well, I'm going to call you in a minute. <laughs> this is my friend. He's the chairman of the school board. His name is Kevin Adams. Kevin, thank you for being here. You're right. Okay, yeah, Caleb White is here as well. He's my office intern. Sorry about that. This list uh, is, just keeps growing as people show up. So I appreciate everyone being here to participate. Andrade's office. Andrade's office. Oh, there they are. Guys, thank you for being here. Is Alex here as well? All right. Anyone from Michelle Salzman's office? Doug Broxson's office? Okay. They were all invited. We invited everyone. Um, I've got three main goals tonight. I was asked to, to do this town hall about six weeks ago. We had six um, or seven people come to the meeting and they were very concerned about the uh, multi-unit townhomes that are being built, the apartments. So um, one, of the, one of the gentlemen uh, just politely asked if we would do a town hall. And I said, absolutely. I do them all the time. I love to do it. I'm going to do them very frequently because there's a lot of issues down here. So my main goals here are to describe exactly where we, how we got where we are, where we are in this process. Um, and then I want to provide every shred of the documentation that was utilized to approve this multifamily development. And then finally, I want to hear from you. I'm going to answer, uh, if I can't answer them, I've got staff here. We want to answer all your questions 
um, from the attendees while also I'm going to describe some mitigation measures and some proposals that I'm going to bring forward that might help situations like this in the future. So um, we'll start out with the traffic. Um, Deborah Dantine, Dantine Consulting, uh, was invited. Uh, she did the traffic analysis. Um, unfortunately, her brother's wedding is in Ohio and she cannot be here. I also want to recognize the team uh, of developers that are here uh, from Birmingham. They came down here because I said, the citizens want to know what you're planning to do with these apartments. And they drove, he brought a team of four people down here. So I'd like, I'd like to ask that we give a round of applause to Holder Nevins and his team. Thank you. They, uh, they certainly didn't have to come, but I appreciate the fact that they did. And they brought some renderings and a little bit, and a little bit later in the meeting, they will, um, I will introduce him and he will give some comments and show you some of the renderings of what we're trying to do. We did a, how did we get here? How did this project come to be? Um, in mid-2021, the property was sold. At that time, this part of the county was a part of District 2. At the same time, the county was working on our once per decade decennial redistricting. That was a process that was going along at the same time. While the approvals, applications, permits were being applied for that project that we're gonna talk about tonight, um, it was all in District 2 at that time. I was not aware of it. I had my hands full in Beulah. After the redistricting, after the redistricting, about three and a half weeks after, all the final permits got approved. So I inherited this project, but I, I want every person in this room to know one thing. Even though I inherited this project, I'm gonna take ownership. That's why I'm here. I'm gonna answer every question that you put to me, and if I can't answer it, staff's gonna answer it, and we're gonna explain the process and how it happened and the reasons behind it, and then I'm gonna leave you with some ideas that I wanna bring forward to the board to perhaps uh, prevent these sorts of things from happening. We've had a number of apartment complexes in District 1 that have really snuck up on residents. They weren't aware of it. Because if all of the zoning criteria is met, it does not have to come before the planning board. And that, and that means you don't get the cards in the mail, so you don't know. So I'm, I'm going to look at, and I'll, just, I'll start with this, I'm going to look at bringing a standalone ordinance for apartments and multifamily that requires notification in a, in a mile radius around it so that residents are not blindsided. And then I'm also gonna, I'm gonna put this forward to my counterparts on the board, um, that at least two town halls be held by the developer prior to the permits being issued so that the residents know what's being planned. Now, will that help this situation here? No. But I'm a guy who tries to bring solutions. Look, I, I inherited this, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna take all the abuse you give me tonight, hopefully not too much. Um, I'll try and answer the questions and, and then we'll move forward. So without further ado, I wanna introduce um, uh, I'm going to introduce some folks that are here. Do, do, do we know if Bruce Woody, ah, speak of the devil. All right, Bruce, we, we'll start now that you're here. Come on down. This is, give it up for Mr. Bruce Woody. He's the director of ECUA. So while Bruce makes his way down, he is actually here um, uh, representing Vicki Campbell, who's the District 1 ECUA rep. I asked if she could make it. She had a commitment, so she sent the executive director. So. Uh, we'll, we'll have him give some comments here in a moment. But we're going to start out this evening with an um, uh, introduction of Wes Marino. He's our administrator, and he's going to bring some remarks. Wes? Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. It's great to be here tonight. We always enjoy coming and interacting with the citizens. It's always good for us to be able to glean the information and glean the concerns so that we can come back and address them and answer those questions. And we have a great staff with us tonight. I think we have one of the most talented, skilled staff that we've had in, in quite some time, uh, especially in the last four to five years, I would say. So we're here tonight. I won't take up a lot of time, but it's great to be here. Appreciate the church, open the doors. You always love a church that has a heartbeat for the community and willing to uh, open their doors to the community. So I appreciate that. And I appreciate, of course, all of the public that's here tonight because it's, this is why we're here. It's about you answering your questions. And if we can't answer them tonight, we will get the answers and bring them back to you. So. Uh, appreciate everybody being here, and I appreciate Jeff. I appreciate the opportunity to be here as well. Thank you, Wes, for being yep. here, man. Thank you. All right, we've done the introduction of the staff and the developer's representative. Um, elected officials present. Okay, at this point, I'm going to invite to the podium um, ECUA Executive Director Bruce Woody. He's representing Vicki Campbell this evening. Um, Bruce, you recognize? Where you recognize? Come on down and give an update from ECUA. Thanks for being here. 
Good evening. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, stop by this evening and, and meet with you. Last time we were in a different room. I um, needed more space. I'm pleased to see that you needed more space and you've got more, got more folks available. Uh, we uh, take very seriously our responsibilities and obligations and uh, um, the ability that we have to provide water, wastewater, and sanitation. I'll get this a little bit better and I'm a little closer to it. Yeah, get right on. Okay, um, appreciate the, um, the uh, responsibilities we have to provide you uh, safe, efficient, and uh, cost-effective water services as a public utility as opposed to a private utility. You have local representation, uh, elected officials here in your community that you can speak with when you have uh, concerns or issues uh, to address rather than having to go to Tallahassee and having to talk to the Public Service Commission. So um, hopefully that's a a good service and advantage to you and the purpose that uh, we are here is to provide those services at the most efficient and cost-effective rate that we particularly can. Miss um, uh, Vicki Campbell is the uh, District 1 representative for this area. There are a couple of things that she wanted me to particularly mention. Uh, she gets contact on occasion about requests for sewer service on Canal Road. I don't know if there's any representatives that live in that particular area. Yes. on Canal Road. Yeah, and she, she asked that uh, if you have any uh, concerns or issues about that, might speak to me afterwards if there's the interest in creating a um, MSBU or some means by which to provide that service. Uh, please talk to me and we'll, we'll have some conversations afterwards as well. Uh, I'd like to touch on uh, another subject as well, recycling. Uh, as you know, the uh, ECUA provides recycling services across the county. Uh, the sanitation service is a fee you pay for, is a service you pay for. Recycling is a voluntary program. We provide the additional container for recycling. I would like to encourage you strongly, if you participate in our program, that's wonderful, I appreciate that. There's some stickers on the, uh, back, the refrigerator magnets on the back uh, table back there that you can uh, pick up with you and help reinforce what can be recycled and what can't. If you're not interested in recycling, uh, we, uh, please contact us. We'd be happy to take that can back. Um, the only reason I say that is we get quite a bit of contamination in our uh, recycling stream. Uh, we have quite a few partners that participate with us, and those that uh, do a good job have contamination of about 15 to 20 percent, and that's our overall goal. But countywide, our, the amount of contamination, meaning trash that's mixed in with the recycling, things that shouldn't be there, is upward of 45%. Uh, that creates a pretty significant expense, um, defeats the purpose of us trying to do our recycling. So uh, if you participate in recycling, thank you very much. Please continue to do so. If you're not interested in recycling, uh, it is an option. Uh, give us a call, we'd be happy to do. Uh, take that can back. Or if you need an additional can, you can contact us and for a uh, fee of about $4.69 uh, a month, we can provide a second uh, green can for your regular trash as well. Thanks again. Well, thank you, Bruce. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, there's a lot going on with the school district too, and we have a brand new school right down the road, and the chairman of the school board is here tonight, my friend Kevin Adams. Please welcome him. Kevin, thank you for being here. Okay, I'm going to give you a little bit of update on District 1. These are my views and not necessarily the views of the school district or my fellow board members. Get that in. Um, with the Pleasant Grove School, we're, we're expecting it to be almost completed all the way at the end of February. Uh, it, it will be built and finished at that time, I hope. Uh, we've already uh, advertised with the ZAZAC committee to meet the site of tenants boundaries for that school. I believe we're thinking about NAS Pensacola will probably be hopefully be picked up in that new school. And, um, and then in, in the fall of 2023 is when we're expecting the students to migrate over from the old school. The old, the old school sits in the top hazard zone of the, of the NAS fly zone. So the Navy's gonna be very happy for us to get out of that building, get the kids away from that high mishap area. So uh, we're looking forward to the new schools. Beautiful, I took a walk through it the other day. So it's, it's really nice. Um, 
Blue Angel is nearly complete with their brand new HVAC system that's in there and going in there. And Helen Carroll's getting a brand new chiller, plus they're getting that outdoor covered area for the students. They love to eat out at the picnic tables, so that's, that's being built too. Uh, for our traditional students in District 1, I'm not including um, Success Academy or some of the alternate programs, we got 8,464 students in District 1. We're up about 33 students this year. We've been slowly bouncing back up in District 1 from the, all the COVID problems we had. Um, for bus drivers, and I know some of our parents that are watching on TV may be interested in this one, but we're still, we still got a critical shortage. We're, we're about 10 bus drivers short. Uh, for our elementary schools, there's a staggered start time for some of the schools so we can get the bus drivers. You know, some of them have to do double backs, triple backs in order to uh, do it. And when I say double back, that means they run their route. They drop off the kids and they go out and run another route. And then sometimes they have to do a triple back. They go back and run another route. We don't have a bus driver. That's how, how critical it is to pick up bus drivers. In order to get back to the, to the process we had before, before we started doing the tier with elementary, we'd have to have 50 more bus drivers hired. Okay, so uh, hopefully we're going to keep trying to get their pay more competitive. But, it, you know, if you've got CDL, it's, it's pretty competitive around here. Vicki Campbell will tell you that with ECUA. Um, the other big issue that we got is Warrington Middle, okay? I do not know everything I hope, <laughs> there's so many unknowns is what I wanna say, okay? Because uh, the, the last two days, the superintendent's been meeting with the charter school company, trying to decide if it's gonna be a K-8 charter. But when I watched the Board of Education, when he went and spoke to Board of Education, they said by January, there need to be a contract. And as Jeff knows as being a school board member, Right now, no charter school has submitted an application that I know of, okay? So I can't make things happen unless a charter school agrees to do it. So if, if we do not get a charter school, by the end of this year, the Board of Education wants to close Warrant the Middle. There's only two schools, two schools, that would be available to shift students to. One of them is Bailey, and the other one's Workman. Both of them are 10 miles away from Warrington Middle. 10 miles, okay? So you basically got a tenant zone of 1,215 students for a middle school. If it's K-8, well, that's gonna be less middle schoolers, right? Six, seven, and eight for Warrington. They gotta redistrict that Warrington area for a K-8. That still means probably some students are gonna be shifted. Uh, I think Bailey now has got probably about 100 students choiced in from Warrington now, but you, it, there's a good chance we may have more. So we don't know, but when it comes down to uh, the next couple of months, we'll find out. So I will tell you, we, we, at COVID, we had a bunch of F schools and we had a bunch of D schools, a whole bunch of them, and they, they didn't calculate that grade. This last time, we only had one F and like seven D, so it's getting better. The Board of Education is saying, we're not waiting on COVID no more for these at-risk students. If you don't immediately get them up, we're gonna start closing schools. That's where it is. There's a state law, they have that power. So I don't believe, and I don't think Jeff will tell you this, that you can move at-risk students or you can close schools for at-risk students and actually close the achievement gap. It don't do it. It's a lot of hard work. Um, a lot of people concentrate on fixing schools versus fixing families and communities. Bingo. So that's, Bingo. that's where it is. So if you don't have that, if that child didn't win the lottery for what he was born into and don't have that structurally sound support from the family, whether they're coming home, doing their chores, doing their homework, eating supper, going to bed on time, you know, like a lot of our kids did, you got a tough situation for a school. So, uh, but anyway, I wanted to put that out there. I do not, so how this process will work, sooner or later, our superintendent's gonna have to bring a proposal to the school board, and we're gonna have to vote for it. Just like when he tried to have that proposal to give this charter school company $15,000 per month, the board voted no, because there wasn't enough there for us to, you know, it's almost like this piece of paper here, give me $15,000 a month to come down there and take a look at Warrant the Middle, okay? We couldn't do that. <laughs> we couldn't do that for the taxpayers. So they gotta have some type of performance for bringing three employees in. We're gonna consult with you daily 
something on a piece of paper that can make five board members or a majority of the board members vote to give a company money, public tax dollars. So right now, I do not know no more than what I just told you. So we'll, we'll see when the, uh, when the dust settles, you know. But uh, according to Board of Education, January is the deadline. Right around the corner. Yes, yes. So uh, the other issue we had, I think uh, a lot of y'all have heard about it probably, was the book library thing. And uh, where we ran in some trouble, if anybody's been watching what I've been saying, we've only been concentrating, or I have only been concentrating, on Florida State Statute 847.012. That says we cannot have obscene or pornographic material in our media centers. Okay? Somehow, some of that got in. Superintendent believes about 20 bucks. I think it might be a little bit more. So what I've been concentrating it on is anything because it's against state law to get it out. We haven't really been discussing the things that the governor passed lately, you know, which gets more into so, more social, social issues. So um, that's been a big deal. We need to clean it up. In my opinion, the public tax dollars should not pay for any obscene or pornographic materials. Okay. So, uh, but anyway, so that's my update right there. I think I've got it all. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah. Thanks for being here, man. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you, Kevin. And before we move on, I will just say that the school board job is an incredibly important job. I did it for 10 years, and Kevin is doing a fantastic job for the students and the parents and the taxpayers of this district. So thank you every day for what you do, Kevin. It's underappreciated, but I appreciate it, and I know the students and the parents do as well. Okay, now we're going to get into what we are here to talk about. I appreciate everyone being here. We've recognized um, Alex Andrade's folks. Um, I, I just before we do this, though, we do have the sheriff of Escambia County here. I never like to put him on the spot, but he's here. I want to I want to publicly thank him for his leadership. There's been a tremendous amount of up, there's been an uptick in violence in our community. We had a tragically in District One at Bellevue Park. Many of you know we had a shooting, a double shooting. One individual died. So the sheriff has taken it upon himself to put together a roundtable so we can discuss solutions, ideas to kind of get a handle on it. And I just want to publicly, uh, again, express my, my thanks for your leadership. I thank you for being here. And obviously, I want to offer you the mic to you if, if you'd like it. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah, come on down. This is Sheriff. I don't know what the of course meant, <laughs> but I will tell you that um, it's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to see everyone here we have some issues with some crime some violent crime and I talked to a lot of people I said we can put it in two categories the two categories are domestic violence or high risk that's it what you're hearing about day in day out is our media pushing oh we've had another one here we've had another one here so if you haven't missed if you haven't heard what we were talking about there's some unique things for you to know first of all one is too many one drive-by shooting one shooting into a house one homicide is too many but let's look at the, at the problem, and I'm not going to take as long as Kevin because he talks, he talks a lot longer than I do. But I will tell you this. We, the unique parts of this is we had one homicide in the jail. Sheriff's deputies are not going to be able to stop a homicide in the jail. We had, we had two murder-suicides. It's difficult for us to stop those because they happen inside a house where obviously an individual kills a spouse typically and then they kill themselves. That may be a mental health situation. But I will tell you that the, the two unique pieces of it, zero have any gang affiliation, zero. So if you hear all oh, gang violence is going crazy, that's not true. We have zero uh, statutory gang enhancement and none of them were random. Everyone knew their assailant. So here's what we're having to do. The reason we had this round table is because we want to start from zero. We wanted to say, this is the situation we have in Escambia County. Now, I was elected for two things, enforcement and engagement. Not just enforcement and engagement, but like we've never seen before. Whether, so so I've, I've increased our partnerships with all of our federal authorities from day one. I said, we're going to partner with our federal authorities because here's what's happening. The fentanyl's coming. It's not coming from Pensacola. The fentanyl's not coming from Jay or pace it's coming from somewhere else and it's not coming in our, from our jurisdiction so we got to work with them i had a meeting today with dea and i said you guys are killing it well, they are killing it. our investigators are working with dea and we are we are we are seizing kilos and kilos of methamphetamine fentanyl uh cocaine all those sort of things and the people are going to jail for a long time so that's the one thing we did we doubled the size of our gun crimes unit our gun crimes unit when i took over had one person 
The deputies around here may or may not know. We had one person, and, and then we had one supervisor. Why well, double the size of that, triple the size of that, so we can follow up on it. So here's what's going to happen. If you commit a crime, you shoot someone in a scamby account, you're going to jail, or one of your cohorts are going to kill you. Now, that's as blunt as I can possibly be. I am an advocate of the Second Amendment. So if you're concerned about your safety and you have a weapon to protect yourself and someone breaks into your house, use it. Use it. <laughs> the first green agree right there. I knew it was, I knew it was gonna come right there. Hey, you should ask him, do you agree with what the sheriff just said? <laughs> and, and, and here's the next thing. The tie goes to the runner. You know, if you're in your home and something happens, you're not going to be charged. So four of the ones we already have are justified. And we're looking at the fifth one to be justified. Now, I'm not going to be the one that says, please shoot somebody. That's your decision. But I can tell you, if you come to my house, you won't be able to hold up a card. <laughs> because, you know, it, it, it can't say I surrender card. It's not going to happen. But I'm telling you this. The men and women of the Escambia County Sheriff's Office are working so hard. Every time I go, I, I go home, I listen to the radio, and I'm thinking, man, that is a tough call. That is tough. What are they going to do about that call? We had a higher speed pursuit just yesterday. And I'm tired of these people thinking they can run through a red light, run through a stop sign, jeopardize our streets, and think they can get away with it. So I told them, if you can chase them, it's called pit, but I call it bump them a little bit. Bump a little bit and do it quickly. End this thing. Put them in jail where they belong. Because if they're in jail, they're not, they're not breaking into anyone's houses. They're not doing any of that kind of nonsense. So our arrests are up. Our clearance rates are up. Our engagement is through the roof. We have, we have a number of things. We have a Blazer Academy. I'm not going to have time right now because I, I promised I wouldn't talk as long as, as, as Kevin. And, um, and I... <laughs> It's a microphone. <laughs> it's, it's a, I, hey, let me tell you something. I, I am so proud of the work of the men and women, and I am very proud of the support of our community. Because recently we announced that we have zero openings. Zero openings. Now, we continue to, to recruit. That has never happened at the sheriff's office, not in anyone's memory. It's not happening. It's not happening in Seattle. It's not happening in, in D.C. It's not happening in these places. But because you guys support law enforcement, because they know that if they do the job, the very difficult job, that you're gonna support them, and that their sheriff is gonna support them. And I can guarantee you that that is true. So I just, I, I'll leave it with this. Thank you all for coming because without the involvement, without the support, then, then, then we won't know where you want us to go next. All right, I, I appreciate the, um, the agrees, and, and, and we're gonna keep doing what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna keep training, and we're gonna continue with common sense and decency. Thank you guys very much. It's always tough to come after him, that's, that's for sure. Thank you, Chip, for being here, Sheriff. All right, we're gonna get right into it now. Um, uh, Debbie has passed out cards as you've come in, so um, if you have those completed, we're gonna, we're gonna make sure we go through every card, and then, uh, then if we don't answer your questions, and you have questions after, and you filled out a card, we're gonna let you come up and ask your questions at the microphone, because last time I didn't do that, and I got beat up for it, so we're gonna make sure that uh, we cover all the bases, we can get all the questions answered, we're going to put out a lot of information, um, but I want to make sure that anyone that's here that wants their voice heard is going to hear it. But we start out with the cards because that way we can get through the most number of questions. And what I have found is a lot of times someone will fill out a card and it might be a question you were wanting to ask or a question that you, or, or it dovetails with a question you did ask and it just makes things more efficient. Last time we had one of these, we, we answered 62 questions that night with the staff. So we can do it quick. I, you know, I spent the time to introduce the folks that are here, but now we're gonna get into the meat of it, traffic and the development. Um, so I appreciate y'all's uh, patience. Um, we're gonna start out um, with the Perdido Key Roundabout. It's, uh, it's in construction right now. It's supposed to be completed in uh, March of next year. Uh, so, um, Chris, can you come up and then you nudge me if I get these facts wrong, but I'd like you to give an update on the, um, on the traffic stuff that's happening right now, Sorrento, the stuff that we went over earlier. This is Chris Phillips. He's our traffic um, engineer for the county, so he's going to give you a quick update. Thanks, everyone. Um, as was previous mentioned, and as you are fully aware, this intersection um, here at Interarity and Sorrento seems like it's probably been going on forever. Um, we're happy to report, um, and that, that's a DOT intersection, um, but they are wrapping it up. Uh, they are uh, doing, getting ready to do the final striping and signage, and that will be the end for that particular portion of the intersection. Um, 
the uh, resurfacing project that is going on from the Theo Bars Bridge all the way over and through uh, Bower Road is about 50% done. Uh, that is, I think you would all agree, long overdue um, due to the condition of the road. With that, uh, through actions that Commissioner Bragash uh, put in place, uh, we, we talked with DOT and, and there was a safety audit some years ago and with that they are adding, as you can see, the five foot paved shoulders to hopefully if someone departs the travel lane they will be able to correct and before they get into the shoulder of the road. Um, since I've been here and there have been some additional fatalities unfortunately, we've been able to um, talk with DOT about increasing the safety along that corridor all the way to Blue Angel Parkway. Uh, you've all seen uh, the turn lane at Nighthawk is, is finished, so that will definitely help with the, uh, the rear end um, accidents there wait, for people waiting to go left into Nighthawk. But if you notice along the, the striping uh, between Bower and Blue Angel, you see these little, these little plastic pucks on top of the new stripes that are in there. Those are not only reflective, but if you start veering into opposing traffic or into the white line on the edge, they make a noise in your car and hopefully that will wake you up, cause you to pay attention, whatever the case may be, to stay in your lane. So DOT graciously added those without there being a, a resurfacing project from Bower to Blue Angel. Once you see the resurfacing project done from Bower back this way, you'll see that all of the, all of the striping will have uh, those, those plastic reflector pucks on them. Um, and that, all that can do is just, just help on with, with the, uh, the safety aspect of those projects. The roundabout, as you saw um, over the past couple of days, traffic has been rerouted to uh, the part that was just finished so that they can work on what I'm gonna call the western half um, of, of the circle. I noticed today it's already been milled out, so they'll start working on, on that pavement there. Um, again, that, that project wraps up uh, sometime in, in March. Um, the lighting. Talk about the lighting. So the lighting, that's, that's a very good point. So here at the intersection, once the intersection is finished and the resurfacing project is done, uh, there will be a uh, turn lane as part of the resurfacing going into the new Circle K. It didn't make sense for those, the people that uh, installed the Circle K to put a turn lane in that was going to immediately get ripped out. So there, there's going to be a nice turn lane there. And once all of that is wrapped up, there will be lighting put around the intersection, uh, a couple of hundred feet in each direction on all legs of the intersection. And then when that is complete and all of the resurfacing projects are complete, we're gonna ask DOT to look again at the corridor from Interarity out to Bower Road to see what we can do about installing some additional roadside lighting there. Interestingly, the, the, the accidents that have happened there have not been attributed to the dark basically so that makes it a little harder to get the lighting in there um, but this gentleman has a way with dot so i expect that we can uh we can talk them into uh into helping us out as best we can thank you very much yes sir no problem and i'm going to tag on a couple things that um that chris didn't mention uh, and chris you can just give me a nod if i'm right on this the board voted for $2 million for Sorrento Road for the PD&E. That's going to shave about five years off of the completion time frame before landing that road. And um, what was the other thing? <laughs> I can't remember. There's, there's a lot going on out here, but uh, I just wanted to give that traffic update. Um, let's talk about, uh, well, the Perdido multifamily development. I want to introduce um, Holder Nevins at this point to come up. Uh, he works for Core Incorporated. He's a representative of the developer. And I would, I, would, uh, I would give the floor to him. I'm gonna, his mic is going to be on, and he's going to show you some renderings and then give you an overview of the project. And then we're going to talk about the planning and the zoning and all the permitting uh, that went into this project. And then I'm going I'm to end it with giving you um, the way that you can get every document, the traffic study, the, the wetlands delineation study, every permit, Northwest Florida Water Management. That way everyone knows, because there's some, there some folks that have, that have said that there was absolutely no planning and it just happened. Of course, that's not true. So um, without further ado, Holder, when you're ready, you take it away. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Okay. Okay, wait, try that. All right. Uh, like I said, my name is Holder Nevins. Um, I live in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, I've been coming down here for my entire life. Uh, we're not, uh, while we may be out of towners, uh, we love this city. We love it with all of our heart. 
And um, so we, our family comes down probably um, once a week, uh, whether it be extended family, uh, my parents or my sister and brother-in-law. So just to give you an update of how much we love this area, I hope you um, can connect me, with me at least on that. Um, our team is over here. Patrick Dreer is with CORE. Rob Chutney is with AMPLO. And David Roberts is with CORE as well. David handles our construction. Our contractor is also here, represented out of Birmingham, Alabama. They build apartments, um, probably 3,000 units a year. Um, and a lot of those are in Florida. Um, our development is called Altura. Um, it is a Class A multifamily development. I know there is a lot of uh, maybe misinformation or confusion about what we are doing, but um, let that end right here that this is not affordable housing and it is not Section 8. Um, this is a um, top of the market Class A multifamily development um, and there is no way to actually build this type of uh, a Section 8 or affordable housing project. Um, Excuse me, excuse me. No, no, ma'am, please, please don't interrupt. You'll have time to ask the comment, please. With the, the price of land in this area, unfortunately, without some sort of government incentive, there is no way to build a, a truly Section 8 housing on a site like this. Um, you all know how nice this area is. Uh, we have 12 residential buildings. Uh, the tallest building is four stories tall. The rest of the buildings are three and two stories. Uh, the total number of units um, was reported wrong on the news this morning. Um, many things have been reported incorrectly. I understand that there's mistakes made, but there are. There is 325 units on this property. Um, this site, just so we're all clear, is zoned uh, for 25 units an acre. There's actually 28 acres on here, and, uh, and John can correct me if I'm wrong here, but uh, 20 eight times 25 um, would put us around 700 allowable units on this site um, and there's always the back and forth of whether well uh, is the wetlands usable and can that be calculated into your density if you take that out the six acres uh, you can take 150 units out and this site would still be zoned for 550 so my only point being is that um, the planned and uh, the approved development is for much less than what is actually allowed on the site. Um, there will be some uh, dry uh, storage for uh, boats um, for our residents um, because we believe that will be used with a state park across the street. The uh, apartment complex is highly amenitized and this is what we do in many markets. We've done this in St. Augustine and New Smyrna most recently. Um, we are actually developing some apartments um, over in Pensacola as well. Uh, these, this is a picture and a rendering of the pool that you will get and just if you can see it or if you want to come up later and see what it looks like, once again this is not Section 8 housing. Um, pickleball courts, a grand lawn, we'll have a club and fitness uh, area for our residents. Um, the average rent will be probably north of $2,000 a month. Um, so and it will be rentals. There will be no for sale product. Uh, this parcel um, is not subdivided. So uh, somebody later, if, if we were to ever sell this property and our goal is to hold properties, um, would have to come in and subdivide this with the county and get all that approved at a later date. I'll go ahead and tell you it's not gonna happen. It, and it sounds like Horace is nodding his head in the same direction. So. Um, that can give you some peace of mind there. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, information about um, vacation rentals. That's not what this is. Um, our shortest lease term is seven months at our property. Um, back to this right here, I will show you that um, our property is gated on the entrance on Canal and also on Monterey Avenue. Uh, the entrance on Canal will be for residents and guests residents and guests if you heard that and uh, the entrance on Monterey will be for residents only. Um, to give you one more feel picture of what um, you can expect for the interiors of these units um, they will be stainless steel appliances, quartz countertops, open floor plans, one, twos, and three bedrooms. Um, 
there's a lot of, when people say apartments or townhomes or condos, there's a lot of misinformation as to what that actually is. What we are developing is apartments. There are buildings on this site that we, can, that we call townhomes, but they are for rent apartments. They are just different structures. That's all they are. And there is no difference. They are not for sale. There are seven of those buildings with two townhomes in each building. So that's 14 townhome units. And um, just so we're clear also is that multifamily, their bed to unit ratio is much lower than any single family project that would probably be proposed on this site. Um, to give you a little information on property taxes, yes. I thought this was something that um, would help you guys as we've been talking a lot about um, our sheriff and uh, what they've been doing and how um, it takes funds to run to run it the way that uh, our sheriff for Scammy County is doing that. And the same for Kevin at the school. This current uh, parcel only produces $386. And I got that number wrong the other day. I told you 5,000. It was only $386 of property taxes. I just got the notice the other day, our property tax for, because of what we paid for the land will probably be $56,000 this year. I don't know what the multiple is on 56,000 over $300, but it's a lot. Once this is developed, um, we'll be investing $62 million in hard construction costs plus the land, the taxable value, um, the appraised value, uh, and then when you factor it by 80% and then the 13 mills, which is the Escambi current Escambia County before budget changes, mm -hmm. uh, the tax bill will probably be around $700,000 a year that this property will produce. And what that does is um, five or six of the 13 mills, and Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong here, will go directly to schools. Correct. Yeah. Some to the county and some to demanded by the state, I believe. Yep. So if you do the math, um, six over 13, a little less than 50% of 700,000 will be going to Escambia County schools. There's also a portion that will go to the sheriff. Um, I believe that is 0.6 mils, if I'm not mistaken. And um, so I would imagine that's about $40,000 a year that might be going, that will be going, because um, Chris Jones will reassess our property he will. when we are done. <laughs> um, show, what about this? Show them the interiors. I will. Um, like I said a minute ago, these are one, two, and three bedroom units. Uh, the kitchens are open floor plans here, stainless appliances, and uh, walk-in showers and garden tubs, and uh, large walk-in closets as well. Um, I know this is probably not what you all want to hear, but there is a housing shortage in Escambia County. And, um, and so I hope that this property um, solves some of those issues in the most tasteful way possible. Um, there are competitors to this project out on Nine Mile Road um, in a lot of the service industry that is serving maybe you guys and maybe the vacation industry on the beach uh, that are having to drive all the way to Nine Mile Road to find somewhere to rent that they can afford uh, to live. Um, Nine Mile Road, uh, just the other day, there's a, there is a project called the Port at Pathstone. Maybe you know where this one is. Um, it's in District 1. <laughs> it is. It, it, there's another one. Um, at least up 37 units a month average right now. So if that gives you any feel for um, how many uh, units are needed in this area. Um, and, and once again, I hope that stat helps. I know it doesn't appease your concerns. Well, Holder, I, I really appreciate you and your team coming down. And not to put you on the spot, but I'm going to have a lot of questions. Sure. Would, you, would you be amenable to answering some Absolutely. questions? Okay. Yes, okay, so perfect. So we'll leave that there. Um, without further ado, Debbie, we probably need to get these comment cards because I see a stack. It looks like war and peace. It's pretty thick. <laughs> I'm going to be a speed reader up here. Yeah, I'm ready because we're going to run out of time. We're not going to do it. We're going to, we're going to rock and roll. Um, while, I'm, while I'm getting those comment cards, I want to give a shout out to a citizen um, in this community who sent in some really thoughtful questions. And, and I want to give her a shout out um, and I want to recognize her, Lenore Taylor. Lenore Taylor, where did she go? Where is she? 
Okay, yeah, let me give her a round of applause and then I'm gonna tell you why. She sent a list of questions that, that were phenomenal and great questions and questions that were interesting to me. So what we did was we put it out to the staff and the staff, to their credit, turned it around today, within three hours. She turned it around and we gave her um, every answer. But one of the things that she asked me to do when I kick off the comment cards was to read this into the record. So I told her that I would do it because the questions are very salient and the answers that staff provided I think will um, probably answer a lot of your questions, probably answer a lot of questions on the comment cards, probably steal a little thunder, but I think it's important um, uh, that this happens. So I'll do this very, very quickly, but Lenore, thank you again for being proactive. Yeah, that's, that's a thick stack, so we're gonna rock and roll. Um, okay, so uh, she asked um, this. Thank you for scheduling the meeting with your constituents. I understand you would like questions submitted related to District 1 concerns so they can be addressed by you. I'm a multi-generational resident of Interarity Point, Florida. My family history goes back over 100 years. My grandmother remembers watching the Intercoastal Canal being dug with spoils pit in, a huge, in the huge dunes on the south side of the point. I would have loved to have seen that. Our area used to be a very diverse habitat for many animals, panther, bear, bobcat, deer, coyote, fox, squirrel, gators, gopher, tortoise, migratory waterfowl, raptors, raptors, and songbirds. Some of these species no longer roam our lands and some are desperately holding on. The clear cut of the land from Monterey Avenue to the bridge across the road displaced many, many animals, in my opinion, without regard to their location or their well-being. There's a natural spring located behind the Point Baptist Church. It now finds itself wedged between the church and the cleared land that is set to be built upon. That spring has been there for as long as any old timer in the area can remember. I have contacted the Florida Springs Institute to garner more information as to its depth and magnitude and I will be happy to share that information with you when received. Here are my questions as it relates to the builder's intent to develop the land and the impact of the surrounding community. Number one, per the Escambia County Code, Florida Co Code of Ordinance, section 42-304, stormwater discharges from new development are required to obtain appropriate federal, state, and or local permits prior to the discharging of waters of the U.S. within the county. Did the de developer pull the permits? If so, with whom? And what are the parameters of those permits? And here's the staff's response. For projects within Escambia County, projects that require a stormwater management system shall at a minimum be designated to provide for the treatment of the first one half inch of runoff, which shall be recovered in 72 hours. The method of treatment shall comply with the design methods referenced in the latest edition of the Environmental Resources Permit Applicant's Handbook, Volume 2. The state requires a permit as well through the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. The Northwest Florida Water Management District and these address stormwater requirements. The filing of 0.51 acres of isolated wetlands and the impacting of approximately 25% of the wetland buffers was addressed. The next question, according to ordinance number 201350, as a result of the impairment of Escambia County surface waters caused by excessive nutrients, or as a result of increased levels of nitrogen in the surface or groundwater within the aquifers or springs within the boundaries of Escambia County, the Escambia County Board of County Commissioners has determined that the use of fertilizers on lands within Escambia County creates a risk to contributing to adverse effects on surface and or groundwater. Overgrowth of algae and vegetation hinder the effectiveness of flood attenuation. Regulation of those nutrients, including phosphorus and nitrogen containing fertilizer will help improve and maintain water and habitat quality. What measures and best management practices are actively being taken by the developer to ensure fertilizers, commercial or industrial, do not negatively impact the spring which is a critical asset to the environmental, recreational, cultural, and well-being of Escambia County residents and the health of the public. The answer, additionally, we provide attenuation to the runoff from the 100-year critical duration event up to and including 24-hour duration so that the post-development runoff rate does not ex exceed the pre-development runoff rate. Per 42406, the developer has preserved a fertilizer-free zone in excess of the required 10 feet of width near the environmentally sensitive areas, wetland buffer areas, and spring areas. Per 42407, the developer has preserved a voluntary low maintenance zone in excess of the 10 foot width near environmentally sensitive areas, wetland buffer area. The state of Florida regulates commercial licensed applicators through the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. And one thing I'll point out here as I, as I veer off her, of her questions for one moment, when we find anyone that violates these, we shut them down. About a month ago, there was someone discharging water to Perdido Bay up off of, um, off of Highway 98 in District 1, and one of, my, one of the constituents up there that I know very well texted me and said, hey, this is not right. I immediately sent it to staff. 
They contacted the Florida Department of Environmental Protection, and we shut that development down. So I'm, I'm telling you all these things because citizens have a, a vital role to play in all of this. If, if the developer's not doing, if the, if the contractor's not doing his job, if we're not doing these things, I need to know. Because once I know, the staff's going to know. And once the staff knows, the Florida Department of Environmental Protection will know. So everyone's got to be on the same page. But it's a team effort. Next question, did the developer do a site survey prior to clear cutting the land? Was the developer aware of the spring's existence prior to clearing the land? If not, then I posit that the developer did not practice due diligence in ensuring the adjacent habitat did not contain environmentally sensitive land. If they were aware, was there any type of mitigation or land swap with the Army Corps of Engineers? Answer from the staff, yes. The landward extent of the wetlands was mapped and endangered species surveys were conducted by two different consulting firms. The large wetlands complex, plus or minus 6.46 acres, was preserved with, a, with the majority of a 25-foot wide wetland buffer intact. Authorization was granted by Northwest Florida Water Management District to fill in 0.51 acres of isolated wetlands. The site-specific surveys did note the presence of a spring. However, the wetland complex that it just discharges into was not proposed to be impacted. Springs in our area are not on the list of springs that the Northwest Florida Water Management Dis District or Florida Department of Environmental Pre Protection is required to implement re uh, additional regulatory requirements to protect. The county does not regulate land use activities around springs, but I will point out this development has more than six acres, all the wetlands that is not part of the development. All those trees are still there, all those wetlands are there, and um, I just wanted to point that out. Number four, traffic study. This is very important. Traffic studies are used to look at recurring transportation problems and propose solutions to these problems. Hearsay says that the person who conducted the traffic study for this area was fired from her job in South Florida due to on-the-job incompetence and then hired by Escambia County to do the same thing here and is no longer employed with Escambia County. Would you like to comment on that? What did the numbers show? And will another traffic count be conducted by a qualified and independent business? If not, why not? Since there's been a shade cast on the last study, I see absolutely no proposed solutions to the traffic problems that are already self-evident to the residents in this area. Here's the staff response. My predecessor uh, did not conduct a traffic study of the area. The apartment complex had an independent licensed engineer perform the traffic analysis. If the board would like to fund a traffic study conducted for the entire Perdido Key area, we can certainly hire an independent consultant to perform those duties. And I'm going to stop before I go to number five and just say this. I have that document. It's a 39-page traffic study. It's got all the charts, graphs, all the reference material, exhibits. And I want everyone, you've got pens, you've got paper, district1 at myascambia.com. That's my email address. Just say, send me the info. Shoot me an email, send me the info. I'll, I'll send you a link, a hyperlink. You click it. And every one of these documents that I'm describing as I answer these questions will be available to you. You can click them, open them, and you can read them. Um, uh, final, final thing is the roundabout on Perdido Key. Um, I think it is a lame fix for a heavily stretched. Th uh, thanks a lot, Lenore. Yeah, it's it's a lame fix. <laughs> lame fix for a heavily traveled stretch of road. There have already been accidents there. Well, should I read that? Uh, may. And the thing is not even finished yet. I'll leave the adjective out. Um, is the roundabout the best fix? If so, why? Response. This is from our traffic engineer. No doubt there have been a few accidents during construction. We have lowered the work zone speed limit to 25 miles per hour. We've added signage to warn the work zone and give advance warnings of the Johnson's Beach detour. And we are obtaining pricing to add lighting to the core of the work zone to supplement that which is already there. The decision to install the roundabout was prior to my employment, to uh, Chris's employment, but it is my understanding community meetings were held and the roundabout received the most positive feedback of the options, including do nothing, install a signal, or construct the roundabout. I have a display in my office with stickers from that meeting that show support for the roundabout. Roundabouts generally allow the constant movements of traffic and provide a means for a safe, slow movement at busy intersections. FDOT has a list of roundabout benefits at the following link, and then he lists the link. Uh, final, final thing that she said is something that's outside of our control, but luckily the sheriff is here, so I'll just go ahead and read it so, for, for his attention. Number six, speed limits. Enforce them, and that goes for Purdue to Key Drive, Gulf Beach Highway, and Interiority Point. Yeah, and I agree with that. So. 
And, and to the sheriff's credit, when I first started getting complaints, uh, when we started the roundabout construction, we, we contacted his office and he went out there and put one of the speed monitors out there and he added extra patrols. So we appreciate Sheriff Simmons. And, you know, there's not enough police officers and sheriff's deputies to be everywhere where people drive aggressively. Um, but I would simply tell everyone here, you know, we're doing, we're putting the safety measures up that are necessary. Um, there's still people that are going to speed through there. We had a, a gentleman rear end two people trying to make a left and come to find out he was on uh, narcotics and was arrested. He was driving. Uh, not much we could do to control people that are going to do things like that. So I, I took a minute to read that because I think it's very important. And I think she asked a lot of very good questions and we have a lot of good answers. Um, and I hope I appreciate everyone's indulgence. Now we're going to go through these comments very, very quickly. We're going to do this. I'm going to skip a couple parts of this agenda because I want to make sure we have time uh, to do everything that we need to do. So we're going to we're going to start right here. Um, OK, so Stacy Murray uh, codes to stop new businesses on Interarity Point. Keep family neighborhoods. Yes, yes. Reasonable Airbnb three to five day minimum. Lower speed in neighborhoods. Lots of young speeders. Action for homes with trees and brushes that block the proper turning, blocking views, and a bike path on Sorrento. Um, that's, that's a, a aggressive list, uh, all of which I would love to support. The Sorrento Road bike path, though, I, that's going to take the state um, and state funding. That's a state road. Uh, I, I would be all in support of it. It would be great if we had Sorrento, a safe, a safe bike lane. We just had two bikes. Uh, run over the other night, and sadly, one of the gentlemen, uh, one of the one of the persons died. So, um, obviously, uh, I don't know if that's a question. These are just comments that that she's uh, that that Stacy is looking for us to do. Why do you have others speak taking up valuable time? Well, it's because when I do a town hall, I'll t I'll answer the question. I think I think that the the input of the other constitutional officers that attend the town hall are very important and it gives them an opportunity. And as you can see, uh, they didn't take too much time, but they, there's some important things happening outside of the county. Um, we came to hear about the apartment development and you're gonna hear about it. That's uh, from Melinda Combs. I promise you, you're gonna hear all about it. Are the roads around the area going to be made wider as traffic backs up severely on Gulf Beach Highway, Interarity and Sorrento? Our sidewalks, I, I think, uh, I think uh, everyone would agree with that. I mean, I think we want, I think we all want that. Uh, yes, and and I will tell I will tell you on the four lane project. There was a project prior to 2014 to four lane Perdita Key Drive, Sorrento, all the way out, and it was going to be a hurricane evacuation route. And many many parts of it were put into place. Um, the pre the commissioner at that time, who served from 06 to 20 to 2014, um, had a good relationship with FDOT, and um, at 2014, that project died, and that's a shame. But what we're doing now is we're putting it back together. As you heard Chris say earlier, we've just added $2 million in local option sales tax to get their PD&E study done to shave about five years off of it. And we've got the support of the board. The board understands this is a dangerous road. There's a lot of wrecks out there. Um, and we, we're, we're going to do everything we can from this county to get the state uh, engaged on that. So I can tell you we're working on all those issues just as quickly as we can. Gulf Beach Highway 2. By the way, um, if anyone travels uh, Barrancas twice a day, me, for 17 years working at the base, if you haven't been out there and driven that lately, FDOT, hats off to them. They've done a tremendous job with resurfacing that. It's, it's a brand new road. It's a brand new road. They're about to start something on Navy Boulevard 2. Not in my district, but um, I like to throw out props to FDOT when, when they do great things. Um, they finished a road in, nine, on, in Beulah at Nine Mile Road. It was two years overdue and about 10 million over budget. But when they finished it, but when they finished it, it was fantastic. So uh, uh, we appreciate everything they do. Uh, why rentals versus purchase? Um, I, uh, Holder, do you want to take that one? Sure. Uh, in simplest form, that's our business. It's just rentals. Um, we don't build condos. That's not what we do. We don't know that business. And we don't attempt to know it either. Um, rentals, in our mind, is, uh, is what this market is demanding. And, there's plenty of condos, and I think there's a place for those on the beach. If I was a condo developer, that's where I would put them, but um, close to Publix and a highly amenitized areas where uh, rentals need to be. Um, no, that's perfect. Poor, poor signage for road. Uh, we're off Gulf Beach Colony. Can't we afford better ways to slow traffic? Um, road work at the entrance of Beach Colony. Can we afford better ways to slow traffic? Well, if that's... Um, 
if that's something that we can look at from the traffic, um, our traffic engineers taking notes, that's the other thing that we're going to do. As we take these notes, it's going to be read into the video, which is going to be posted on the website, and then staff that's here is taking copious notes. So anything that we can do, we're going to do, obviously. Is that my time? Okay. <laughs> my time's up. No, that's, I, I wish. <laughs> Kidding. All right. What are the future plans for Sorrento Road? Well, we just went through that. It's a state road. We've got the four-lane project back on. I was the chairman of the uh, Florida Alabama Transportation Planning Organization. I have a great rapport with Austin Mount, the executive director, all the folks uh, at FDOT, including the secretary who used to be the district secretary. Long story short, at the TPO, nothing happens unless you move things up on the priority list. So. Once this district uh, came back to District 1, all these issues happening, I, ta I took it to the TPO and we, and we bumped it up from 18. It was languishing 18, 19 on the list, all the way up to 8. And that shaved another several years off of it. So just, you know, we, we were there in 2014. Elections have consequences. We're back going in the right direction. And I'm telling you, you're going to watch, you're going to see. It takes time, but we're doing all these little things to get it going. So that's the future of Sorrento. It will be a four-lane road from uh, all the way uh, to Blue Angel. That's, that's what's going to happen. What is the acceptable building elevation? The grade looks to be much higher than the neighbors. It's a very good question, Lots with mo which will most likely impact the neighbors with water runoff. Let's talk about storm attenuation on that. Horace, can you, can you speak to that, or who would speak to that? Or is Kevin, is Kevin Blanchard? Okay. Uh, Drew, you want to you wanna speak to that? That's a very good question because as I drove by it, it did, it looked like it was, and that, uh, for everyone's knowledge, that's the biggest complaint that we get outside of traffic is my neighbor uh, built up his land and now I'm getting flooded. It happens. We've had it happen on Pale Moon within, um, within the Perdita Bay Country Club and that person was fined. That what they do is they do it and they don't have a permit. And then we're behind the eight ball trying to fix it. But you want to speak to that? I can do that. Okay, please. Quickly. Yeah, quickly. Do it quick because we got we to gotta move. So this project um, had to be built higher than the ground level due to FEMA regulations. FEMA has, is in the process of updating their, their storm maps for the county. Um, that's still a couple years out at this point. These folks went ahead and built to that new higher standard. FEMA gives them a base flood elevation. Here's where the top of your bottom floor has to be. County has a three foot freeboard ordinance on top of that. What that does is everyone goes three feet higher to meet those flood regulations. Because of our increased standards, everyone with flood insurance in the county gets a discounted rate as long as we hold to those. These developers voluntarily are building to that higher level. But what does that the mean issue, to, to the neighbor? Yes, sir. That's, that I was, I was going to say the issue we were trying to explain to folks is if somebody has 100 square feet under roof, 10 feet high, that much water runs off. If it's at 20 feet high, it's still the same amount of water. All the runoff that's coming off their impervious surfaces has to be handled on their development through their pond. So the water stays on site. Thank you. And if yeah, please, yeah, you gotta speak in the mic for the record though, Horace. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, I know everybody came, I speak loud in a way. Um, yes, for the stormwater, every dish developer must Again, they must maintain their own stormwater. If they do not, no seals will be granted until the site plan is perfectly in compliance with the approved site plan. Thank you. And that's, and I'll tell you what, that's incredibly important because that's how these guys get paid when they get the CO and they can start leasing the apartments or renting or whatever the case might be. That's when we have the leverage. And I will tell you, in my district up in Beulah, we had several ponds, didn't meet muster. They, we sent them back out, come do it again, $20,000. One, one of the engineers has a hit out for me because I, I, I kept at it. We're going to do that here too. I mean, we play by the rules, right? But we hold people accountable. And I, I, there's not much more that I can do than that. Okay, we're talking about widening a road. Will sidewalks or at least a bike lane be added? I, I would assume when the, when the state goes to do that plan, it will be added. I've seen the renderings of what they would like to do. In fact, I can send it to you. It's a part of, um, uh, it's, it's a component of the diagrams and drawings that they've given on the project to, to um, resurface. And they said, here's what we would like to be. Of course, it's also with a disclaimer, it says it's not funded. <laughs> they show you what we want, but we're not going to pay for it. But um, I can send that to you. Again, district1 at myascambia.com. 
and Debbie or myself will forward you the link to all these documents because I know it's a lot of information and we're going real quick, but I want to make, as I said, I want to get through all these cards and we're going to do it. How will Monterey and Canal handle uh, the traffic? With a light, uh, will a light go in at Monterey exit from the new housing? Um, that is, no, that's not necessary according to the traffic um, analysis, which I, which I will forward to you. They're, they're, um, it's a very meticulous process that she goes through. She uses standard, uh, uh, a standard manual to do it. I'm not, look, I'm not a traffic engineer. Chris, do you want to help me out? I'm dying over here. Explain this so that they understand it. I'm speaking Greek. But I read it. I mean, I read it. Okay, ex explain why, uh, why that is. So anytime um, a, a development of this type is, is conducted, a traffic engineer comes on board and they look at what is called a, a ITE trip generation manual. This trip generation manual is full of all kinds of graphs for different types of, of developments, single family houses, multifamily uh, gas yeah, stations, bedrooms, right? just all, all kinds of, of, of developments. And what they have done over the past 50 plus years has taken traffic counts from those. And they have many, many formulas that I could bore you to death for the next six months on. Um, but they distribute that traffic amongst the development and on all the side streets. And you look at not only the traffic coming out of the development, but you look at the back, background traffic to determine if a turn lane needs to be installed or if a traffic signal needs to be installed. Now, on a very s slow speed road, you would have to have hundreds of additional trips to warrant a turn lane because of, you, again, you don't have the background traffic that would have to wait for somebody to make that turn. So that's why you're not going to see turn lanes on Monterey and on Canal. Uh, and they analyzed not only Monterey, Canal, but they looked at um, uh, Interarity uh, and Perdido Key Drive, um, and worked with DOT very closely on Perdido Key Drive as to what needed to be there. Problem there is the bridge exists and so it, you don't want to build a substandard turn lane um, in lieu of building any turn lane. So they, they chose to look at it again, a DOT did after the mill and resurface is finished to see if there's something that could be done there. But the physical constraints of the bridge would limit the, uh, the approach and the storage to get back onto canal. You'll notice that they have taken the little island out of the canal intersection, which will make that a more perpendicular intersection uh, and that's that is definitely a safety upgrade yes i saw that thank you chris yes, don't go too far away okay. <laughs> all right will you support zoning changes on perdido key preservation of our dwelling cap demands that we cannot increase the density of course i will i support the perdido key master plan i inherited it i support it um and i also support uh the caps as it's written i know it's critical um tim day is here if you want or he oh tim day was here oh they, well, he is here tim come on just real quickly, just tell them why we can't increase the density on Perdido Key under the Perdido Key Master Plan and the Habitat Conservation Plan. The answer is yes. I'm not going to support uh, doing it, but here's the reasons why. So just real quick, um, everybody knows about the mouse. You got uh, to speak in the mic. <clears throat> sorry, it's, I'm hearing different speakers. So it's, anyway, um, the easy thing to say regarding Perdido Key and hitting caps is um, just with the environmental restrictions on the key, it's nearly impossible to hit. Um, but it's, you know, our friends at PKA, which I saw over there, Charles is here. Well, will certainly let us know if we start to approach it too closely. All right, thank you. What, what he said. All right, uh, how will Monterey and Canal handle the track? Okay, we already did that one. Um, this past summer, it was taking uh, repair companies 45 minutes to come down Sorrento. Some companies are charging more because of the delay. The new uh, complex is going to increase this dramatically. When are there going to be four lanes? Again, not, ne not soon enough, um, but we're working on it, as you heard. We're doing everything we can from the county's perspective. And, and if I could enlist your support and help, um, uh, we have Alex Andrade's staff. Where are those guys at? Where are they at? There they are. They're right there. Those guys work for Representative Alex Andrade. He's the state rep. This is a state road. Um, I would encourage you to get their cards send them emails and say, support Commissioner Bergash, support Escambia County, let's get Sorrento four lane. No more white crosses on that road, let's get it done. Wait, raise your hand one more time so they can see you. Those are the guys, we need state money for some of this. We already put two million in from Escambia, um, but we need the state to really kick in. If Alex was here, I would have done the same thing. 
except he would have been up here. All right. The previous owners of Earth Products uh, by the Walmart told me that they, for two years, tried to get zoned for these apartments and that the, the backup plan for these apartments was by Perdido Bay Church. If that is so, why is this location better than by the Walmart? I, I do not know the answer to it. Does anyone from zoning and planning know anything about that? Is that true? Here comes, here comes Drew Homer. I will say this. Um, I've had this question asked of me a lot. It's a commercially zoned parcel, and people said, well, prior to 2015, when we changed all the zoning, what was it? It was C1 at that time, and the future land use right now is mixed-use suburban, which allows for apartment complexes, and the previous one was coastal high water, um, and which would have allowed for commercial. So uh, some folks think that we changed the zoning, but we didn't. I inherited the zoning. The zoning hasn't really changed, and anything allowable in the commercial zoning category could have been built there. Imagine, imagine a Walmart super center. I mean, there are things that could happen that are much worse than, what are, than what's happening, I guess is what I'm saying. Dr Drew, is there any truth to this rumor that, uh, that, that it was going to be behind the church? Do you know anything about it? He's one of the head planners. Y'all are referring to the place down Sorrento, I'm assuming, in this question? Yeah. I know they had talked to us about uh, rezoning. Um, don't know the motivations behind everything with the developers. They picked this one because the zoning and future land use matched what they needed. They didn't have to make any changes whatsoever. Um, as the commissioner said, previous future land use, previous zoning, all would have allowed for this apartment complex. All right. And commissioner, uh, yes, that was not. I'm not sure how that, who, what about that project, but that has nothing to do. Yeah, yeah. With us. I just that was the previous. I guess someone was okay. looking to buy something. And, um, I, you know, I'll also correct uh, some rumors. You know, rumors go out on the Internet these days, and it's kind of crazy. Um, and, you know, uh, Joseph Goebbels was the information minister of uh, the, the Third Reich. And, and one thing he said was, if you want someone to believe something, tell a lie, make it a big one, and keep repeating it. There's a lie that's out there saying that the only reason this apartment is happening is because Jeff Bergash got this part of the district um, after the redistricting. It's not true. These folks were working with the staff. Whether or not I was going to take it over or the previous commissioner was going to stay, as long as they follow the rules and fill out the permits and the forms and follow the ordinance, it was going to happen. So, uh, you know, if you see that online or you see people talking that nonsense, it's garbage. It was going to happen. I've asked Holder. He's never even met the previous commissioner. I didn't meet, I didn't meet him until I called him. I called him and said, hey, do you want to come down here and meet everyone? <laughs> and he agreed to do it, which is kind of amazing. So thank you for being here. But uh, it was, it was going to happen. It was in the works whether or not I took over this district or not. I just want people to know that. All right, is there any way now or in the future that parts of this can be uh, Section 8 public assistance? I think we've already answered that question. No. No chance. No chance. How exactly is a traffic study conducted? Uh, this is Rebecca Schmidt. Shoot me an email, and I will send it to you, and it goes through it piece by piece. I have information that will go. Where is, is Rebecca here? Where is Rebecca? Okay. Rebecca, please send me an email, district1 at myscambi.com. I will forward it to you. And then you can call me, and then I'll immediately refer you to Chris Phillips, and he'll tell you all about it. It's, it's almost embarrassing that this community that I enjoy so much has not been up to date on local changes. Everyone would have uh, to know about this build if they would just watch a commissioner's meeting or look at the public records for permitting. I apologize that my neighbors are wasting your valuable time <laughs> with, with something that was decided so long ago. Now, wait, wait a minute. Now, hey, I, I didn't, that's not an audience plant, I promise you. But I will just simply say this. I, I, I never look at this as a waste of time. Even if I come here and you guys beat, beat me up, I, I, this is what I do. You're the, bo you're the boss, and I work for you, right? So this is now part of my district. I'm going to... Well, she's, she's the number one boss. You guys are number two. But, but uh, I work for you guys you know, in all seriousness, and, um, and I think it's just important. I can come to this meeting and say, this isn't my fault. You know, I, I want to own this. That's why I'm here. And I'll do these every month if you want to. And we'll go through. And look, we'll work together. You guys will send me emails. You'll call my office. I'll solve problems where I can. And if I can't, I'll ask for help. I'll ask for you to email Alex Andrade so we get money from FDOT. Look, I'm equal opportunity, and I'm all about solutions. So uh, uh, to the previous commenter, I, while I appreciate that, that's very sweet, um, I, I'm quite happy being here. Uh, the hotter the kitchen the better, so far as I'm concerned. All right, this, this intersection is already poorly designed for the amount of traffic currently. 
Road work at this intersection is insanely slow. Yeah, we've already talked about that. By the way, if I could remind everyone, that's a state project. <laughs> that's not a county project. That, that was my standard line when Nine Mile Road was two years over, overdue. State project, so, so call the guys. Ra raise your hands again. Those guys right there. <laughs> yeah, get their cards, I'm telling you. All right, so it, we, all, we all know what's going on with that. How many here think that this is an urban area? Uh, I, I wouldn't call it an urban area. I don't know, how do you, it's mixed use suburban? This horse is a director of planning, so this is a perfect question for you. Yes. It what is, is this a area? Mixed use low. You gotta speak into the mic. It is a low, basically mixed use area that allows for residential as well as low impact commercial uses as well. That's what mixed use urban means. If you want to know me, my number is, 850-554-8210. I will be glad to send you an email, talk to you about the land development code and go over it piece by piece if you have the stomach for it. <laughs> it's, it's quite a lot too, and he will do it, I'm, I'm telling you. And look, before I read this next card, I just want to say again, and it's, it might sound pretentious, but the staff of this county, you might read things in the Pensacola News Journal or you might have hearsay, but the staff of this county is dedicated and we have the greatest, greatest people working in this county. They do a great job every day. They have a very tough job because a lot of the things the commissioners do put them in hot water. But, but I, uh, I, I, I definitely manage them up and appreciate them. And the, the fact that they're all here tonight, I can't make them show up. I could probably make Wes do it, but I can't make all these people show up. Uh, it means a lot and it really expresses their dedication. Based off of Jeff's comment, uh-oh, third person, this will open up lower income housing in town. Are they going to allow Airbnb if they are, investors will buy them, just like Redfish Harbor, and this will create an enormous amount of congestion by people trying to enter the key to the beaches. Well, as, as you heard from Holder, th they don't do that. They, their shortest lease is seven months, so you don't have to worry about that. And to the point about Redfish Harbor, I have, is there anyone here? Raise your hand if you live in Red, Redfish Harbor. Anyone here? Okay. All right, so we've got several over here. Um, I've had a number of you ask me about the, um, the short-term rental ordinance, and we're looking at that. It hasn't been brought forward to the board. One of my counterparts uh, is working on it, and I'll look at that favorably. I think there's some ways we can tailor it. I, you know, I don't think we use the uh, the hammer. I think we'd use a scalpel instead of the, instead of the uh, the cleaver. But um, I understand the problems that you guys are are dealing with, and I think the sheriff is here, and I'm sure he's heard about some of those issues as well. Um, but I just wanted you to know um, that hasn't come before us yet for our consideration. So next one, when will the traffic light be installed at the bridge? When will turning lanes be installed? Uh, traffic light at the bridge. I don't know what traffic light, it, you know what they're talking about? No, Jim Lynch, are you here? Yes. What traffic light? I think it's the light at the bottom of the bridge. Oh, okay, yeah. That, that, okay, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I just misunderstood. That, that, that is not, that's not part of this project, no sir, it's not because and I think and, and if you read the traffic study, send Jim, email me, and I promise you I'll send you the traffic study, and then after you read it and go through it, you'll see the reasons why. I, I mean, uh, and then if you do, still have questions, call me, and I'll explain it, or I'll refer you to Chris, and he'll explain it. But, but uh, there's, there's logic, logical reasons why that, that, that didn't happen. It has to do with the speed coming off the bridge. Um, if you do it, it, it creates some kind of an issue there, and you'll see it in the traffic study. The experts looked at it, believe me, I'm, I'm not the expert. The lightning, the lighting in the construction zones do not seem very good. Okay, we're working on that. You guys heard earlier, well, the county's gonna pay for some extra lighting and then when we're done, we're gonna see if we can get permanent lighting there. All right, uh, we're getting a lot of comments and we're making good time, we can do this. Traffic study is wrong, Inner Road is maxed out. There is no way you can exit onto Sorrento by the bridge. Um, again, Tina, ja Tina Jackson, Tina Jackson, uh, I, if you email me, I will send you the I will send you the traffic study, and I'll be happy to go through it. We have um, it. Okay, you have it already. Okay. Okay. Amber Schaefer, uh, we have called your office multiple times about the traffic and speeding on Canal and the sheriff's office. Now uh, we have dump trucks and construction vehicles speeding on Canal. We have requested speed bumps with no response. With the addition of another restaurant on Canal. Uh, behind the Perdido Seafood Market, the traffic and the parking on Canal and Perdido Key Drive has gotten out of control. People are parking dangerously. We contact the sheriff's office with no resolution. Um, <laughs> well, the sheriff, uh, I bring him as a guest and, and he gets beat up. Uh, you, you, you might want to look into that. We'll forward this to you. 
for your for your attention. Um, in terms of the speed bumps, our staff can look into that. Um, I'm going to pass this over to Wes, and it, I didn't see that she gave her information. So Amber Schaefer, are you here? Oh, okay. If you could write your information down, and staff will follow up with you. Okay. How did this project get so far along without public notice? Our infrastructure is pushed to the limits already. Tell us how these permits were obtained. Great question, and I get it all the time, and I get it all over my district, because my district has blown up with growth. Um, we have a land development code, and the developers are very, very deft in maneuvering it. They know it inside and out, it oftentimes more better than the people who, uh, who manage it. Um, and so, as, we, as I demonstrated, Greg, when I when I sent you every piece of documentation, once you're done reading all of it, you'll see that they dotted the I's and crossed the T's. It's because that's what they do. They, they learn your de development code and they figure out how they can put a business model into it, get it approved and make it remunerative and so that it makes business sense. And that's exactly what happened here. Um, and again, you know, we've gone through the history of it. That property was for sale for many, many years, many years. And it was generating, I thought 10,000, he says 368, 368. Um, and now it's going to generate, after we get done developing it, it's going to generate 700,000. That does a lot of lights and a lot of improvements. Also, Chris Phillips, um, for everyone's information, I've asked him to look at all the roads around this development that are county roads that we can see. It's tough for us to do anything on a state road. You got to, I mean, it's, it's very difficult. You got to go through a big process. It's a nightmare. But any of the roads that are our roads around it, we can look at things. And I've already asked him to, to, to draw up a list of projects and he's done some sidewalks and, and perhaps some other things. So. Um, look for that to happen as well. Look for that to happen. Is there a plan to make Perdita Key and Perdita Bay a township? That's news to me. Uh, I guess I'd hear that from you. I haven't heard that yet. That's a new one on me. Are we getting the, if you like higher taxes, I mean, I don't know. I, boy, I don't know. I know people that live in the city of Pensacola and they pay us and they pay them and it's, you know. Are we getting the gas lines extended to the Perdita Bay Country Club? I, I do not know. Is there anyone that knows the answer to that question? We don't have anyone from the city. The city runs uh, Pensacola Energy. They run the gas company. Uh, we'll have staff follow up. This is Rosi Lagur. Lagur? Laguer. Laguer. I'm sorry. We butchered your name. Staff will follow up, and we'll get you the answer on that. Uh, any plans to raise the uh, causeway at the end of the inerity road before the island? I have no idea. Is there any, anyone in the house that knows? No, there are no plans. Or you just don't know? I don't know. Okay, Chris, this is some action for you. Can you find out? That's for Chris. All right, we'll find out and we'll get back to you. That's why it's, hey guys, that's why it's incredibly important that you put your name and stuff here so we can answer these questions. And then if I can't answer your questions, you're going to come up to the mic if you want and speak and say what you want. And we'll get your, we'll get your questions answered. Um, what is the up, uh, update on the traffic light at Sorrento Road and Doug Ford Road? Okay. I've asked. It's been warranted. It is warranted and it's going to be done. I've got that on good authority from FDOT. It's just we don't have the timeline yet. I asked Chris to get all the timelines, and that's one we haven't got back yet. But it's going to happen, even if I've got to put more money into it. But the, the critical key there is getting it warranted, and it's been warranted now. That's, that's where they look at all the recs, all the data, and it, it's like the third or fourth time we've done it, and they finally said, yeah, yeah, you need one. So it's coming. So anyone who lives in Perdita Bay Country Club, okay, you're going to get relief. It's coming. Mark my words. All right. Inrary Point Road is not built to handle the overflow traffic that will result from the new town hall, townhomes, excuse me. There isn't a lot of room to expand without taking away from the current residents on that road. You're absolutely right, because one of the first things I said after this whole thing kind of blew up on me was, well, can we do something on Inrary Road, one of our roads, to widen it on the sides? But the problem is there's no right away there. There's businesses right there leading up to it. So the state has, has done us a bit of a favor with, with their project that they've done. They've added a little bit of capacity in, uh, in the turn lanes, but there's not a lot more that we can do because there's no right of way there. Um, but again, I can, I'm willing to look at anything. Chris, that's something, that's something for us to look at if we can. Um, I'm certainly willing to spend some local option sales tax. See, because to do stuff like that, you know, you gotta, you gotta have revenue to do it. And as you heard, the property sitting there vacant was $386 a year, and now it's gonna generate 700,000. That's an incredible amount of money, and that allows us to do things like uh, extend sidewalks and turn lanes. As a new resident, it seems that development in the Perdido and Rarity Wingate area has a very few controls. That is only traffic, environmental, etc. Is there, or have it, has it been considered better management of development for quality, improved lifestyles, etc. For example, development uh, overlay district. 
Uh, it's, it's an excellent question. Um, we used to have what's called concurrency in this county. When I was a school board member from 2006 to 2016, uh, for the first mm, five years, we had what was called concurrency. So if a, if a developer like Holder came in and wanted to build something big next to, say, you know, Helen Carroll Elementary School where it was already overcrowded, you know, he, they had to pay. They had to pay a, a premium to do it because they were going to put an impact on the, on the schools. They also looked at traffic and they looked at stormwater and other things. Um, it, when we hit the Great Recession, that became burdensome. Uh, everyone was struggling. Jobs were disappearing. And in 2011, Governor Rick Scott took the concurrency out of the, out of the DEO at the state level. At that point, Escambia County, and I'm telling you an absolute fact, please check, fact check me because I've already fact checked it with all the staff. At that point, uh, Escambia County commissioners at that time uh, put it in the land development code. They said the state took it away, but we're going to put it in our code. So we had concurrency. But then in 2014, it was removed from the county several years before I got here. But I support concurrency. And I will tell you this. People ask me, well, why don't you make the developers fix the road? Well, if we don't have concurrency, we can't make them do it. I've brought it three times, three times to the board. There's not three votes for it. I support it. I support uh, the previous traffic um, engineer brought mobility fees. I support that. Uh, just stepping back for a minute, I, I've had the good fortune in my life. My dad was a Navy Master Chief, lived all over the world. Other places where I've lived, the developers, if they come in and do something that has a great impact, they have to pay for it. They have to pay for it. And we used to have that here. We don't have it here now. It's frustrating. But I will say this. Uh, in the defense of the developers, we do have a one penny local option sales tax, which is generating money, which can be used all over the county, which is used all over the county. So when we talk uh, concurrency or we talk impact fees, the developers immediately say, well, wait, we helped you get your penny local option sales tax. A lot of counties don't have it. Some counties don't have it. We have it. So, um, and Commissioner, there is uh, just so you, yes. you know, there are impact fees that ECUA charges us on a per dwelling. So our, our um, project has paid three hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars up to ECU to ECUA to ECUA already. So you know the, those are capacity fees that we owe hmm. and we have paid. So they're, real, they're you're totally correct. If Scania County is unique; it doesn't have concurrency, but it does have impact fees. Well, Holder, thank you. You're killing me up here. <laughs> thank, thanks. Uh, well, I didn't know about all that. Uh, how come, uh, my dumb question, like my school board companion, is how come the school board's not getting it? Because this is going to have an impact on the schools down here, right? How come county's not getting it? Because you're hearing it's having an impact on the, not that I want to dump more stuff on it, but I don't have the votes to do it. But we do have local option sales tax, like the $2 million I just spent on Sorrento. I'm going to spend more. Hold me to it. At the next town hall, just say, hey, you said you were going to spend some money. I'm going to spend some money down here. This area generates 40% of our local option sales tax. I bet y'all didn't know that. Yeah. Everyone thinks Pacific, uh, uh, yeah. Pensacola Beach. Perdido Key right. generates a lot of money. Yeah. And I, if I can just give you my humble opinion, I don't think you've got your fair share back. That's changing. That's going to change. That's changing. Hold me to it. OK. Have, have it, boy, these are, boy, this is a long one here. Have, have any of you been out to the property where the 325 units are going in? If so, what were you thinking? There are, like, there are no other properties being built in Pensacola like this on two neighborhood streets. The dump trucks can't even go side by side on them. It's, it's, it's well, I can't say this word. <laughs> Written comments, thank God. See? Written comments are kind of good. Um, we don't care if you build not 325 apartments. No infrastructure has been uh, done to handle uh, this chaos. I understand your frustration, uh, and I'm working on it. As you hear, there's a number of different things we're going to try and do to fix it. I don't, I, guys, we are where we are. This was approved before I got here, essentially. I mean, I, well, exactly, exactly. Thanks, Doug. He said, thanks, Doug. No, it's not even Doug's fault, really. I, I mean, it, it would have it been improved. It would have been approved because these guys, these guys met the code. But again, like I said before, I would have fought. I would have fought to do it uh, maybe a little bit differently. But I would say this. Going forward, as I told you all earlier, I am going to bring a standalone apartment ordinance because you guys shouldn't be hit over the head and bushwhacked and surprised by this. You should know about it in advance so we can have these conversations before a big company uh, you know, invests millions and millions of dollars into something and it's too late to unwind it. Um, I, I know that doesn't help you here. But hold me accountable. I'm going to bring that going forward. And maybe it'll help the next neighborhood who's, who's getting hit over the head. And we're, believe me, we're aware of the infrastructure challenges. That's why you know, we got to call Alex's guys. we got to get state money on FDOT for Sorrento. And I'm going to do what I can with the, state, with the local money here. Where is the one-page presentation of taxes collected? 
by zip code and compared to county funds spent on infrastructure. I don't know that that exists. Is anyone can, we'll take that one for action because I have no idea. We'd have to create a, something on that. Maybe, I don't know, maybe the clerk has that, something like that? Yeah, we can work with that. Okay. Christian. Do you have any thoughts or opinion of the incorporation specifically for the Perdido area? Um, Tim, you know, like I said, uh, I, that's gonna be a decision driven by the citizens. Uh, uh, I haven't heard anything about it. Um, I guess we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. I, I personally don't like the idea of so many overlapping services that your property tax bill goes through the roof, but if that's what people want, uh, we'll have to see what happens. I'm, I'm watching Navarre, and that's been an ongoing saga for 10 years, and they still can't get it. Um, it's a difficult thing to do, and most people don't want to pay extra an extra layer of taxes. Why wasn't the project publicized well in advance? As we've discussed, guys, it was, they did everything according to the zones and according to the regulations. Um, you can't blame them for that, for, you know, for knowing our, our zoning and codes. You can't blame the staff for following our rules. You gotta put that on me. That's why I'm here, I own it. That's why I'm gonna try and bring something that fixes it going forward and so that this kind of thing doesn't happen again to another neighbor. But I will say this, I'm gonna be fair. I mean, we have to be fair. People wanna invest money, people wanna sell property. Um, you know, I, I believe in property rights. I would assume most people in this room do. Um, there's a balance though. We gotta find the balance. And I think guys, I don't know if we found the balance. So we gotta find the balance between existing neighbors, existing residents, and new people coming in and the infrastructure. And it's, it's a yin and a yang, but I'm gonna work on it. I promise you. Uh, do you have an update on the potential light at Doug Ford? Okay, I just gave that one. I, and believe me. <laughs> I've never yet done a news conference from a traffic light, but, it, but when we get Doug Ford, I'm gonna call Channel 3, because that's gonna be a big deal. That's gonna, save, that's gonna save lives, right? That's gonna save people. Why are they bringing all the red clay if we get a lot of rain, what's gonna stop? Very good question. We don't allow red clay on Purdue Key, but they're allowing it here, so who's gonna talk about that? Who's the lucky one gets to talk about that? Yeah, here comes Drew, all right. Drew, you're on the spot, man. It's, because you're, cause you're the nicest guy over there. No. Um, yes, we, had, we do have a white sand ordinance for the key and Santa Rosa Island. We do not for the rest of the county. So the fill that I was explaining, they have to build up to meet the FEMA requirements. It's dirt that's got to come from somewhere, and they have to have a certain consistency because they're putting a lot of weight on top of that after they build up. Thank you. Okay. All right, uh, we gotta, we got to go double time now. What is the developer's uh, lighting plan for the gate exiting Monterey Avenue? 10 seconds or less. Lighting plan? Lighting plan. Lighting. Yep. Um, the, I believe the county itself has a foot candle requirement okay. um, that we will meet and we'll design. And I believe it's already in our electrical drawings or civil drawings. Okay, perfect. You, you'll speak up if I'm wrong. I, I, is that in there already? But I'll okay. tell you this, we will not have any light pollution on other properties because these guys down here won't allow that. Okay, right on. Uh, considering the county traffic department approved 325 apartments with the Class D roads and the death toll on Sorrento Road, I think it is time for taxpaying citizens to pull together and hire an attorney. We are tired of the taxpayers, taxes that we pay for corruption. Uh, you know, I, I mean, that's, that's a pretty strong word, guys. I mean, the, t the ordinances have been there. People build apartments. Look, I, I live on Nine Mile Road. My house is in Beulah. When I, when I moved there in 2004, I bought my house before Ivan. It was a rural community. I, I, didn't even, I wasn't even involved in politics and everything blew up around me. I got, I got involved in politics because I didn't like what I saw. And I ran for this office in 2016 because I said there's a better way. And what I've done up there is I've got a, a master plan. It's queued up, it's funded, it's, it's about to be approved. And we're gonna, we're gonna put a master plan out there to help do it intelligently. There's a way to do growth. But people are coming here. When I was born in 1968, the population was half of what it is now. It's doubled. Same thing with Escambia County. People want to come to Florida. Why wouldn't they? This weather is amazing. Our governor is amazing. We have a great state. We have a great tax structure. Holder told me, he goes, we want to do business in Florida because it's a great state. So we just got to be smart about it. We got to do it correctly. And, um, and that's what we're working on here. That's part of what this is. Now, I want to make sure that I, I don't want to get beat up after this meeting. So we got a lot of cards and I'm going to keep going through. But uh, I know that there was a couple of folks that wanted to make some comments. And I want to make sure uh, that I recognize folks. Um, if there's someone, do you guys want me to keep going or do you want to take it? Yeah. Okay. 
All right, I appreciate that. And I, I don't want anyone to think I'm boxing them out. I'll st in fact, afterwards, I'll stay right here and talk to anyone who wants to talk to me. Because people go, oh, you don't let people talk. I'll stand right here and you could talk to me. I'll stay as late until they kick me out, until the cleaning crew. All right. Oh, that's coming after this if, if I don't run out of time. I'm just running out of time, guys. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm, I know. <laughs> I, I, I hear you. I, I'm, I'm trying to do the best I can. Thanks, thanks for supporting the court redo uh, at Roger Scott Tennis. Okay, that has nothing to do with this, but uh, I do support it. If you play tennis, that's a, that's a great facility. Um, I would like to know if any serious consideration was given before multifamily units were built under the bridge. District 1 at my Escambia, send it to me, and I will send you every document. There's like 40 documents, all of it. Traffic study, wetlands, delay. I'll send it all to you. Uh, Brandy Barton. You have a second part on that? Oh, I'm sorry. Is there a part two? Okay. Uh, oh, especially impact on traffic and other infrastructure. Low water pressure is already an, an issue on interarity. End of the line. Um, and Bruce Woody is left already. I tell you what, uh, Mr. Oh, there. He, oh, he's over here. I thought he was okay. Okay. Low pro, low water pressure. Do you wanna you wanna take that one, or do you wanna you wanna? Would you like to get with him offline, or? No, I wanna hear about it. Well, I don't. But I don't know if he knows about it. I mean, he's, he might have to research it. Do you know about the low water pressure on interarity? Okay. Would you be willing to speak with this gentleman offline? Okay. So he's the guy who runs all the water. So thanks for being here, Bruce. <laughs> Thank God you were here. All right. Are we, are we putting any traffic lights up on Purdue Key Drive? Um, not that I'm aware of. No. Um, will the multifamily complex have access from Sorrento? Uh, yes. W w yes, it will. Um, you'll have to turn off. Wait. Well, yeah, you're coming down and it becomes it becomes Perdido Key Drive, so it's the same road with a different name, but I, that's, is that a trick, who, who wrote that trick question? Ch Ch Carlo Shackelford. Oh, was that a trick question, Carol? Uh, I was wondering if, if they were just gonna cut off Sorrento and not be able to access the apartment complex from Sorrento. No, ma'am, I, I no, I, I don't believe that's the plan, no. Uh, what is the current setback for residential properties? Depends, right? 10 feet? What, yeah, different zoning. Yeah, come different on, you gotta speak into the. Different zoning categories have different setbacks. So if there's someone I want to know the setbacks, you have to give me your address so that we can let you know the zoning, take a look at the land development code, then we can let you know the setbacks. Different zoning categories, they have different setback requirements. Okay, would you answer her email? Yes. There I you go. Do. See, you see, even you got a card. Yep. Yep. Wow. Name. Wow. All right. Uh, what will the traffic pattern be with the new development? There is uh, no new lights. There is new lights and lanes at Interarity Sorrento. What will the new traffic do to the neighborhoods? This development ruins the integrity of the neighborhood and the beach community. Um, well, the new traffic pattern for the for the apartment, they're going to go around and they'll be able to, to access. If they're making a left turn, they'll be able to access Interarity. And then with the state's project that's just been completed, that left turn lane will allow them to make a left safely. If they're just coming out to make a right turn on canal, uh, according to the traffic analysis, which I will send to everyone in the room that emails me, um, according to the uh, traffic analysis, that number of units, based on their generation, their trip generation uh, formula, will have 79 at the peak traffic hour in the afternoon and the morning, 79 additional cars entering and 50 exiting <laughs> per hour that's that's look I'm not a traffic engineer I'm just okay well there's some skepticism there but uh, but I'm just telling you that's 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 what it that's what the traffic study says so Can I just make one comment? yes come to the mic come come to the mic holder you got to give her the mic so I'm a property manager yes ma'am you got to speak in the mic for the record I'm a property manager of 112 units for 39 years yes ma'am how do they get it's only going to be that many units so how many three bedrooms are there? How many two bedrooms and how many one, one bedrooms? There are, let's see if I can hear, 40% one bedrooms, 45, 45% one bedrooms, 40% twos, and 15% three bedrooms. That's the mix. Okay, so you've got two in a one bedroom, four in a two bedroom, mm -hmm. six in a three bedroom. How do you figure 100 and some more, 70 some more cars? You've got over 1,000 possible cars yeah, absolutely. in the area. So how do you get 79 or whatever? Well, I will, I, hour? I'll tell you what, I, I, I'll tell you what, I, I will, sure. I will send you the report. Anyone, anyone who wants the report can get it. Anyone who wants the report, I will send it to you. District 1 at my Escambia. I'm not a traffic engineer, but 
read it, and then call me, and we'll discuss it. All right. Uh, I have managed multi-million dollar real estate in, oh, is that you? Okay. Thank you. How did they go about making uh, how many more vehicles will be expected to be added uh, to the area due to the 325 units? That was a traffic engineer, and she did a, a very thorough assessment, 39 pages with graphs, charts. I'll send it to you. Look, it happened before I got here, but I own it. And so I'm going to send it to you if you want it. And then if you're skeptical, I've because here's what I did when, I, when people started asking me that question. I said, I'm going to let our traffic engineer look it over. And he did. Chris Phillips looked at it and he said, Jeff, this looks good. He just got here. He would have no reason. He would have no reason not to tell me the truth. Because I tell you what, if it was wrong, I would expect him to tell me. That's the way that's the expectation. Send me an email. I'll send you the traffic study and then we'll talk about it. Call Debbie, call me, I'll have a meeting, I'll, whatever we got to do. I'm not uh, trying to be rude. I'm not uh, no, I know. Hey, we're all, hey, we're all frustrated. We're trying, we're trying to get answers. I get it. We're, but, we're well, the family townhome project was started while still in a district under Doug Underhill. Does he have a comment on the rationale for this project? Same regarding the roundabout. Well, you know, he's going to be leaving. Um, so I don't know that. I don't know that he's got a comment that I would, that I would even want to hear. Sava Verrazzo would like to ask a question. Sava, are you here? Sava, come forward, please, by all means. This is Sava Verrazzo. He's a good man. Thanks for being here, Sava. Thank you. <clears throat> the question I have, uh, Jeff, is in the last meeting you had mentioned if the roundabout does not work, mm -hmm. you're willing to tear it out and fix it, right? Oh, yeah, I'll put a light in or we, okay. we, can, we do something. And the reason I mentioned that, I contacted Florida DOT and they used to, they've owned the road since inception. We just took it over recently. It, yeah. That being the case, there's a litmus test. They do seven different tests to determine if it's a good place to put it. There's two in Pensacola, one on 17th. FDOT said, perfect place to put it. The one out here, even though there's a lot of rah-rah about, you know, it's a popular thing, everybody sees it in Britain and they want to have one here. DOT said it's the worst place to put it. We don't have a real big speeding problem, but we do have one. What we have, and I think you all agree, is a bumper-to-bumper -bumper problem all the way from Navy Boulevard all the way out to Perdido Key. Absolutely. I think the roundabout and the new project, with all due respect, because I think the developer did as good a job as he could, mm -hmm. but I think the public needs to be involved, and I appreciate your thoughts about in the future. We'll hopefully curb that from Absolutely. happening again. Yeah, I will. I will do it. Thank you, Saba, for being here. Um, thank you. No, I, I agree with everything you said. Um, and again, on the roundabout, and I don't want this to sound like a tr tired trope, but uh, when I when this district was districted back to District One, and it became part of my district, the funds, the eight hundred fifty thousand dollars in funds for the roundabout, had already been committed by my predecessor, and it came before the board. And I said, "Is this what the people want?" And to his credit, I got to give credit where it's due. He didn't pull the money. He could have. He could have pulled it and put it back on Navy Boulevard or somewhere. He left it there. And he said, this is what the people wanted. And Charles Krupnik is here. He was at a meeting, and I've, I've asked. And staff said that uh, multiple people voted on it. And they were given the option of doing nothing, of putting a traffic light there, or adding the roundabout to slow the traffic down coming around that corner. And that was what the folks wanted. So look, I had an $850,000 project on the board already funded. Um, from what I was told, approved by the majority of the folks out there. Now, look, not everyone, obviously, I respect Sava. I mean, he, I, but here's what I'll say. If it doesn't work, I will pay. We'll fix it. We'll put a light there. It's, it's very basic. Just hold me to it. But we'll have to look at the data and see if, that, if that's the case. Because um, some, some people think it's going to be a very, very good thing to keep the traffic moving. Um, Charles Krupnik, do you want to speak here, PKA? Why don't you come up and, why don't you come up? I just want an additional comment. Yes, sir. Especially if you want to make a left. Especially if you want to, make, yeah. Yeah, and 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 Charles, I mean that that would have been a very easy kill for me. I would have, I could have killed that. But I'm I'm trying to do what the folks wanted in that district. Okay, what if the traffic pattern? Okay, we already. I'm sorry. Answer that. Uh, were the combined effects of the new Pleasant Grove School and increased housing on Perdido studied as a cumulative issue? Um, I, I, I believe that would have been something that would have been looked at under concurrency. I know that the school district um, uh, is consulted. In fact, if you send something to District 1 at Maya Scambia, they actually sent the county 
uh, an assessment of, of what this apartment uh, complex would do to the schools, and I have that document, and, I'm, and I'll send it to you. But yeah, they were, they were consulted, um, but we, we no longer have concurrency where, where a developer would give us money and we would give it to the schools. And, and really, I, I think that's a shame. It worked well when I was a school board member from 6 to 11. But understanding what happened with the Great Recession, it, it, there were some things that had to change. So anyway, that's where we're at on that. Uh, Jimmy Surehouse. Now, Jimmy, are you still here? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank Jimmy for being here. I want to thank Jimmy for coming down to this, uh, the county commission meeting. Uh, we would not be having this town hall if he didn't come to the meeting and say, Bragash, get a town hall down there. And I said, yes, sir, we'll do it. So, Jimmy, thank you for being here. Um, your question is right here. Uh, the revision was just completed, uh, was done to address the needs of a left turn on Sorrento. Since this was conceived, we have added over 125 addresses on Interarity Road alone. Now there is a project of 300 townhomes construction in progress under the bridge that will dump out on Interarity Road. Tourism has become a nine plus months uh, per year with the heavy traffic going over the, and returning from the Bars Bridge. We cannot continue to kick the can down the road. What is the county's plan for correcting the problems of traffic, safety, and congestion in the area? There has to be a long range plan. Well, there is long range planning at the TPO and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get Sorrento. Sorrento Road is the key. Sorrento Road is the key. Eventually, we will have to replace the Bars Bridge. That's going to be a big, tall order. That's a state bridge. You know what I'd like to see? We're, we've got the Perdido Key master, um, multi-use path. Wouldn't it be great if we could have some way to get bikes and walkers and joggers over that bridge over to Perdido Key? That's what I'm going to work on. Look, there's some cool things. I, I, I think that would be cool, and, I, and I'm going to work on that because, because there are some cool cantilever things that can be added to after the fact. There's things that could be engineered. But eventually, guys, that, that bridge is going to have to be replaced. It's just not going to be sufficient. Again, um, Alex Andrade's people are right there. Boom. <laughs> That's a state bridge, right? Am I right? That's a state bridge. Thanks for being here, guys. <laughs> Hope you brought a lot of cards. All right. Uh, I got, he's got multiple questions here. Um, uh, according to Mr. Jones, after the county commissioner's meeting we attended to set this town hall up, there needs to be some building standards put in place to address the building of multiple homes as to the infrastructure requirements. If it was his comments, the way I understood it, in 2008 when the housing crash occurred, these standards were dropped. That's exactly what happened. And people need to know that. I mean, we didn't just arbitrarily, I didn't just arbitrarily do it. It happened, and there were reasons for it at the state level, and the state kicked it back to us, and then we were, does that mean I'm out of time? Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought I was getting the hook, um, but, that, but that's what happened. I'm gonna move real quick because I wanna get these, we're, all, we're getting there, we're almost there. And I, can I just say I appreciate, every, appreciate everyone's patience. I know these are long, it's boring, lots of stuff, but um, well, well, I appreciate you guys being here and your patience. I appreciate your patience. Uh, ingress and ingress for the new townhomes being built on the Bars Bridge. What is the plan to handle the additional traffic flow? Uh, Jimmy, that's you again. Sh did I send you the documents yet? Okay, shoot me an email, District 1 at my Escambia, and I will send it to you. And then you can read it, and we'll, we'll talk about it. Uh, and I got all yours there. Okay, who maintains the Gulf Coast beaches in Perdido? The Gulf Coast beaches, well, uh, the federal government does in Gulf Islands National Seashore. Um, in Perdido, it, a lot of it's private, except for the public beach accesses, which I will say, which I will say, I'm very, very proud. I'm very proud that we opened another 300 feet of public beach access. And Tim Day is here in the back of the room. And he and I are working a plan. Look, one of the things that I want to do is expand public beach access in this county, right? The, we owned that property for many years. It was behind a locked gate. It was all his fault. Not my fault. He got it opened up. Well, oh, I, well I, I did. I, I, I did. I mean, I did. I'll take responsibility for that because I did push very hard to get that done. But it's just because there are a lot of people that can't afford to pay the 20 bucks. I mean, there's kids that their parents can't. Afford, they can't afford it. You go out there, you go, I was out there last week, and those parking lots are small accesses with 40 spots. They're full. They're full, man. We need, we need more, and I'm telling you, I'm gonna break, there's going to be more. Tim knows. i got a, I got a master plan that we're, that's going to be amazing, and I'm just going to tell you. Well, I don't want to give it away, but they, the, more this recession, the more this recession goes and that property becomes, just, just keep your eye on what happens next because we're going to rock and roll. Uh, as for traffic flow into and out of the multifamily apartment complex uh, being built, the north end of the Theo Bars Bridge, can you ask traffic engineers to look at making the canal road be an entrance only? That's a really, that's not a bad idea. And, and wait, an entrance only um, and Monterey Avenue be the out. Of course, Canal Drive must remain open for emergency vehicles. Um, Mark, could, uh, uh, Chris, can you, can you discuss this? They're, one way? Is that what they're well, asking? no, no. I mean, he's talking about making it like a right turn only. I, I, I think, I think as, as I understand it. 
I, I, I'm, I'm willing to look at anything to make it safe. I just don't want to hear about people getting, you know, jackknifed. So we waited the light there for an hour to get out. Well, we don't want that either. I mean, we maybe there's a way. Maybe there's a way we could look at something creative. And look again. I've got local option sales discretionary that I can put into any of the roads that we own. It's just the state roads are difficult for us. What action is needed to require sidewalks in all new residential? Okay, this is Rex. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't even look at the name before I read it. Well, that would require the board to vote that and put that into our land development code. Rex and I, uh, that's Rex Jensen back there. He's come to my coffees. We've talked for many, many years. Um, and, and I don't disagree with him. It's, it's, a t it's tough, though. Um, a lot of places that you'll go, when, when a housing uh, subdivision comes in, they make them build the sidewalks and the bike paths and all the amenities. And for many, many years in Escambia County, um, you know, they leave that up to the developer, what, tort, what sort of subdivision, what sort of community they're trying to put together, and it becomes something that's up to the developer, and it's not mandated. Um, I, I don't know that I would ever want to say you must do it, but I do think that the market allows for the, the more upscale subdivisions like Nature Trail in my district right next to where I live, they put sidewalks in because it's an amenity they want to offer, but their houses are a lot more expensive. On the lower end, uh, some subdivisions don't add it. Um, I'm always open to the question. I think it needs to go through the planning board first for their consideration. And uh, I know that I know that you're very active, and um, I'd be willing to look at anything they brought forward. But I don't think it's a binary choice: do it or don't do it. I think maybe there's something in, in between, and a lot of that gets solved by the market. There's a concern in regarding uh, road impact on Interarity Point due to additional cars coming in from Redfish Harbor, and the new development. It's already a snafu at the intersection, especially during summer. What, what can we be doing to alleviate the burden to the existing road? And shouldn't the developers bear some of the responsibility for these upgrades? Absolutely, um, but like we discussed before, we don't have impact fees here. We don't have traffic concurrency, school concurrency. Apparently we have impact fees for ECUA, <laughs> but, we, but we're not a part of that. Uh, well, we'll have to look into that. That's where we're at on that. That's the answer to that question. Traffic study was done in 2020 during COVID. It should have been done. No, no, that's not. That I don't believe that's. I don't believe that's the case. When was that? When did you train? September 2021. The yeah, 20. Traffic was done. Traffic study was done in 2020, okay. and it was seasonally adjusted uh, for. And if you look at the historic counts, uh, I looked at these today. They went from, I think it was 17, and this is all in the traffic study, yep. so you can look at it. It jumped up to. Uh, close to 19,000 in 2019 and it went down to 18,500 or 18,000 in 2020. So the difference um, was not not noticeable at this point in Okay. No that about about the date of, of it done. Um Chris Phillips hat might have some information on that. Chris, do you want to read that? Yes. Okay. So the the counts for the surrounding streets were done in September of 2021. 21. So definitely not during COVID. Yeah. Thank you. Not during vacation. Right. right that's no. Off season. Yeah, it is off season. You're right. But, but, but seasonally adjusted. Seasonally adjusted. They, they make us do that. A, a lot of traffic will be diverted to Highway 98. It is almost impossible to get out of Riola Place. Uh, ahead of s between 7 and 9 a.m. and equally impossible to get to or out of uh, out of from 3:30 until 5:30. Are there any plans to widen 98 from Blue Angel to the Alabama border? If not, why not? Um, well, that Highway 98 is a state road, and they constantly are monitoring that for what they might do. I know um, about six years ago they re repaved it, did a very nice job. Um, but in terms of what they would want to do in, in widening it to four lanes. Uh, I don't know, but I, I can find out. Chris, another thing that we can check on. I, I, don't, re I don't recall that being on the list of the TPO uh, projects. I don't, I don't recall that, but we'll look into it. Safety pedest uh, pedestrian crossings at beach access. Public non-compliance drivers running through crossing. I've seen that happen uh, when lights are engaged. Can law enforcement patrol these areas? I'll, I will pass this along to my counterpart because that's important. I've seen that out there. People are rude. I mean, you're, you've got you've got a family going through the crosswalk and they blow by them. The yeah. Well, if the lights aren't working, we we will. Yeah, the, light, the lights are on, but they don't. People people just go right, right through them. Through them. Can't, see them Can't see them during the day. I mean, the residents have lived there. No. Well, that's but something. Everybody else, they, they don't give a damn, and the, and the kids. I know they don't. I, but but I give a damn. 
So I'm going to take it for action. We'll see if we can fix it. I don't want that to happen. Okay, what are the plans to improve the Canal Road uh, Perdido Key Drive intersection to take care of the added traffic from the um, approved Altura development on Interity Point? It is already dangerous. Uh, from Charles Krupnik. Uh, we've, I think we've gone through that pretty well. Um, I've, I can send you the traffic report as well. You can see that what's been proposed. But you're not even looking at what the restaurants are doing with it, too. You've got the, you've got the, uh, the seafood place, mm -hmm. uh, Fisherman's, Mark, Corner. Fisherman's Corner, and that one is so dangerous, it's not funny. Well, I will have Chris Phillips look at that. And if there's anything we can do to ameliorate those concerns on Canal or the roads that we own, we'll, we'll do it. I, 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 yeah, I, that's what I've heard. That's what I've heard. I will look at all of these things, I promise you. And look, anything that's within my capability to solve within the monetary confines of, of what I have, I'll, I, will, I will work to do it. How is Perdido Key Beach going to handle all of the new developments? Uh, parking is going to be a real issue. Beach access. What other growth are we going to face in the next five to ten years? Um, it's a great question. Uh, again, people want, people are moving to Florida, so you know we've got the master plan at Perdido Key, which kind of kind of keeps things there. Um, I would simply say the planning board looks at all these things, but public input's critical. I mean, I can bring things, and I do bring things. I bring ideas. I brought concurrency three times, but I didn't have support. I, excuse me, wait, wait. Excuse me. I'll, I'll, I'll come to you. Give me a minute. Uh, I was I was coming to a point, and now I no. I'm, uh, <laughs> I, I promise you, I will, I will hear from you. But uh, the, po the point I'm, that I was trying to make is we have uh, rules, ordinances, a land development code, and, and so we follow it. And the staff knows they have to follow it. And, right? and so when they follow it, and it's something that folks don't want and they're angry about, it, it puts everyone in a tough position. So how do we fix it? How do we fix it so it doesn't happen? We fix it by going into the land development code and fixing it, like I'm going to propose a standalone apartment ordinance, because I'm hearing that's an issue. People didn't hear about it. People wanted to know about it, so I'm going to bring it. But it, it all, when it comes down to things like this, it's, it's all about the policy. So if you have policy suggestions, District 1 at Maya Scambia, send them to me. I, look, I might not always be able to get three votes for them, but I'll try. I'll try. So send it to me. That's how these things change. we got to get three votes, though. How will, you, how will the shoppers turn out of the public's parking lot once the apartments are built? Um, <laughs> when, it, uh, when is the end of the causeway to interiority going to be raised? This was promised. I do not know about either of those. The, end, the causeway was, who, uh, whose, whose comment was that? Raise your hand if, the, if you're still here. Okay. Um, who promised it? Um, I think a previous commissioner. Was it the, the, the last one or the one before him? I know, I know both of them. It was the last. Well, <laughs> uh, he promised you it. We're certainly happy to look into it. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. No, I'm, I mean I'm going to look at it, but I mean. Before you go anywhere, Fort Sally, on Inner Yard, there's 375 homes. Okay. The causeway flooded out three days before the hurricane got here. I know. People couldn't leave the island. They were stranded in their homes. People were drowning on the other end of the island. And nothing's been done. Well. Here's, here's what you're going to hear from me tonight. Do we or do we not have a paving project that can, that can lift that up a foot? Because if so... Well, the higher you go, the water you have to go. So it's something that we'll have to study and look at uh, from an engineering standpoint. Okay. And we, had, we did do a project in, on the causeway some years ago, but we're happy to take another look at it. No. Four feet of water over that road. Well... Residents were stuck on the aisle. I hear you. Uh, okay, I, I hear you. We've got that for action. Um, we're going to relook at that and see what it takes. Joy Blackman couldn't be here tonight. Our county engineer was supposed to be here. She came down with the flu. We hope it's just the flu. Um, we heard this five years ago. Well, I'm, I just got here. I just got here. I, I'll work, work with me. I, yeah, but two years ago, we had a hurricane. What happens if we have one next year? Well, I mean... I, well, okay, now we're, getting, we're kind of getting kind of off topic. To you, sir, your point there, I've asked Wes, we're going to ask the county engineer, wh what was the status? If, if you were promised something, that means someone probably did a, a cost estimate, and we have local option sales tax dollars, we can look at things like this. I, and for everyone here, who, how many people live on interarity? Raise your hand. Okay, it's the majority of the people. You guys got a bad deal. You got a bad deal with your MSBU, and I'm, tell, and I'm telling you, I didn't like it. I don't like it. You got a, you got a raw deal. 
So whatever I can do to help you, I'm going to do it. There's, well, <laughs> I'm pick. I believe me. Every time I. I, uh, that was before my time, but I'm, but I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm with you because every time I turn over a rock, there's seven scorpions in this district that are running different directions, but I'm going to have a town hall and we're going to answer questions and I'm going to do whatever I can do to fix it. You're right about that road. That causeway does get flooded and we're going to look at it. I'm going to, I'll, we'll talk to Joy Blackman. We'll figure out what. Well, I should absolutely do an analysis of this Okay. I, I hear you. I hear you. I will not forget you. Where does the tax, where does the tax money go? Parking issues, litter, and terrible roads. Uh, it, goes, it goes toward all those things, but um, you know, people, litter is a big problem. How many people have noticed it just gets worse and worse? It's just horrible. Under that bridge down there by It's by terrible. I, I, I'm behind people and they're throwing their bags of Whataburger out the way. I just don't, I don't know, no one has any. You're so polite, yes ma'am. A lot of it also comes out of the back of dump trucks because they're yes. not. Yes, absolutely. Bruce, where, where's Bruce at? Well, he doesn't run dump trucks, but garbage trucks. All right. Well, I'm sure you've heard that before. E ECUA, um, tell me if this is true. Are, are, your, are your trucks covered or is stuff flying out of the trucks? Yes. <laughs> Wes says yes. And stuff. Okay. The litter is a problem. Um, is there going to be a right turn lane at Merlin and Sorrento Road? Okay, the, yeah, this, this is, question's been asked. It's not warranted according to the state. State's looked at it. I can have them look at it again. It's tough, and I know because I've known people, I've walked to every house in that district because that was always part of District 1, and the school buses get lined up there trying to make a left, and I've seen the pictures. There's like four or five or six of them, and you can't get out. The only thing I say on that is you can go, and I know it's not convenient, but you can go around and back on the other side and make a right-hand turn on a bower. Maybe that's why the state hasn't warranted it. But uh, uh, Chris, let's let's ask them to look at it again. We, we're going to look at that again, see if we can get it warranted. I appreciate everyone's patience. We're rapidly running out of time, so I want to do these real quick. Uh, and if there's anyone dying to speak, I just don't want to get beat up online later. It wouldn't let people. I'm letting people speak. People are speaking to me. Uh, well, then you're hired. Yeah. Yep. So the fact that you're saying that you're going to keep it is good for the community. I, I want to be clear. The kind of company I work for, yeah. and they keep the company, and they do tend to run it well. I appreciate I've done that. Five evictions in in 36 years and 10 collections. Wow. Because it's owner managed. That's boy, that's a good track record there. I, pre I appreciate the compliment. I, we we cannot make any promises that we will not sell a property. So I want to be very clear there. Our we do I'm hold properties for yes. Exactly. We, we love to hold properties. We also, in this economy, if things are good, th we, we have sold properties. So do not take this as something that we are promising to the community that we are holding. I will say to your comment about evictions, and just so you all know the type of residents we have, we have strict income requirements. We run full background checks, and we call and see where they lived at their previous residence to make sure they were a good tenant. So they, in fair housing, makes us do the same thing to every potential tenant. So if we violate fair housing, we get fined an enormous amount of money. So um, we're held responsible by fair housing, and that's the type of neighbor that you will be getting. I appreciate that, Holder. Um, uh, when is the county going to increase Sorrento Road to four lanes? I've discussed that to State Road. We're working as hard as we can. We've put $2 million into it, and we're, we're pushing the state. Um, what does the county intend to do about the increase in traffic on Interiority Point Road once the apartment complex is finished? We've discussed that. Um, we've kind of beat the horse, but I, but again, I want everyone to have my email address, district one at myscabby.com. Shoot me an email. I'll shoot you all the documents and then we can discuss it and, um, we'll go from there. Uh, will there be a stoplight installed at Sorrento Road and Doug Ford Drive? Yes, there will be. It's coming. Mark my words. Remember this at our next town hall. It's coming. Unless they've all lied to me. <laughs> if they did, well, you know, I've got, I've got, I've got an email. If they did, I've got an email. Is it true that there's a pawn shop going into the old Circle K? Uh, how in the world would I know that? Um, is there? Okay. Well, it, it's a zoning question. Okay. Right there in front of the, the new apartment. Okay. Yep. 
pawn shop. Let, uh, Horace is the zoning guy, so what is it zoned? What is it zoned for? Well, we will have to. I will have to take a look at the zoning at the partial reference number, so that I can find out the zoning. Um, but we have not heard anything about no the pawn shop going to Circle K. But we would. We haven't will heard you, it now. Will you follow up with her? Horace? Absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate Could it. Could you give me the make sure? Uh, what is being done to preserve the remaining oak trees in the in the uh, in the PK area? Oh, oh Purdue K area amidst the new development, uh, the loss is catastrophic and destroys the character of our town. Is there any plan to replant? Um, yes, there were several trees that were cut down for the apartment complex, uh, but we, in terms of mitigation, we had them. They have to replant 111 trees. So, and they're leaving six acres um, undisturbed wetlands. I believe a little over six acres. Um, and that answers some of the questions about some of the wildlife. And I asked, I did ask the question about all the wildlife because I'm concerned about that too. I see it in Beulah where all the, the green space is gone. Um, and, and there's a, where's Tim at? Tim, come give me that description. Tim is going to give you the explanation for which species we have to look out for. And, uh, cause I, I don't know uh, the exact answer, but we do look at that. We do look at it. Oh, I wouldn't know. Do you know off, off trees? Only the ones that are approved. We do have some palm trees. We have whatever is approved by the code. Um, there's a strict, there's a strict landscape ordinance yes. in Escambia County. One of the stricter ones that we've dealt with. So they have to plant something that we approve of. And the amount of inches, caliper inches, we have to come back with, has to equal what we've removed. So I, I believe that's if Horace or John, if you might. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Um, so they may have palm trees in their planting coming back for the mitigation for trees cut down. There's no palm trees counted. So just it, local ordinance, we, we don't look at palm trees as landscaping so for trees. So he's going to do the 100 trees plus whatever palm trees he wants. Correct. The, okay. the, the palm trees are better. gravy so for the development. 100. Sorry, we're, we're running out of time. Okay. Oh, wait, no, no, I'm sorry. You want to talk about endangered species? Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. I just I want to get some of these. There's a few left. I'm going to so, run. Okay, so very, very quickly, just in terms of wildlife, um, there's a series of wildlife that are listed either federal, state, or local in terms of critical importance. Um, all, all sites for development are evaluated for all those types of sp all the species, and that's animals and, and plants. If they find it, then there's a process to either mitigate or avoid. Um, in this particular case, although there was a couple species that could have been in the area, none were noted. So, okay. Thank you for that. Um, what is being done to preserve? Okay, now. As a, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. let's. Hey, wait, Tim, hey, whoa, whoa. let's not, let's not, let's, let's not devolve. Um, uh, as a realtor and a nearby resident, the congestion has really gotten bad. It's hard to move in the four points, especially on Saturdays when vacation rentals turn around. It has been dangerous both going in and exiting Purdue Bay Country Club. Well, the good news there is we're, we're working on a light, as I've told you. It's been warranted by the state. All these issues, we're repaving, we're working on four-laning Sorrento. I know during the season it's, it's incredibly difficult. I will tell you this, um, Pe uh, Pensacola Beach had similar issues, worse in some respects, and it just takes the right planning. Um, a lot of those issues at Pensacola Beach have been, have been fixed um, in-house with solutions for traffic, um, traffic through Casino Beach, one way is going this way, um, a hot right going through. And those, those sorts of solutions can be implemented in Purdue to Key, and, and that's what Chris and I are going to be working on now that this is part of our district. It's, we're, I mean, I'm going to work on it for you. I mean, I'm, I'm not a miracle worker, but I'm a, I'm a, a solutions guy, so I'm going to look at that. Uh, second bridge to replace Purdue to Key. Alex's staff is back there. Um, that's a state bridge. Uh, I, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Let's do it. And let's put a bike path and a running trail alongside of it. The right turn lane at Perdido Key Boulevard ends at the Circle K. Given the new development, it needs to be extended. Okay, who's question? Who's uh, Marsha? Is Marsha still here? Marsha Stanton. Okay, and she didn't leave an email address. Uh, if someone knows Marsha Stanton, that's all. Uh, that was all addressed in the traffic study. There's a reason why it's crosshatched and not part of the turn lane. I read it. Um, it it's it's a safety thing. If you if you make it a full turn lane, then the people coming out of Canal can't do it safely. Um, but that's the answer. Maybe she'll watch the video. Uh, what is the, okay, I'm getting, I'm getting the time. How much? We're supposed to be out by 830. Okay, it's okay. We could do it. We could do it. We got, we got 18 minutes. Okay, what is the impact of future traffic as two parcels of Interarity Point Road just west of the church that are uh, for sale and large parcel on Mirabella, which is also for sale? How 
Will County deal with the additional traffic as these properties are developed? When the properties are developed, they go through a thorough process. Um, it, is, it is the process right now, and, and we will make sure that they follow the process. And I, I, that's all I can do until we change. And Tim, Tim sits on the planning board. So, um, you know, these sorts of ideas should be run through the planning board if we want to make these changes. But meanwhile, we've got a set of ordinances. Are they perfect? Of course not. But we follow the rules, um, and that's how, that's how those will be developed. Why was traffic study done on Tuesday at 4 p.m. instead of 7 p.m. to 8 a.m., um, 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. as people travel to and from work? Um, I don't know that it was. I don't know that that's when it was. Um, is it? Okay. Uh, that means they applied. Chris, does that mean they applied a factor? Are you, are you Rick? No. Okay. I read your study. Oh, you did read the study? Did, yeah. Okay. Let's, yeah, in, in fact. Well, I live here, so it's, it's, a study means nothing. Okay. Because it, it, you sit in traffic forever trying to get in and out of this area. Sorry. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer this question, but yeah. while he's looking for the answer, I'm gonna move to the next one. When and how was the public made aware of the plan for 300 plus apartments? Uh, again, because of the fact that they met the future land use uh, uh, zoning and also the commercial zoning, it didn't have to go to the planning board. So the staff, this, this was worked at the staff level. Again, I didn't know about it till this summer. And this district became part of my district, this section in January, and all the work had been done before that. So I was, uh, I found out in the summer and then folks started coming to the meetings. So that's why we're having this meeting. Um, and that's why I'm gonna bring in a, a standalone apartment ordinance so that citizens of the future don't get hit over the head and they at least have a say before everything is, is approved. Um, uh, will the schools, Helen Carroll and Bailey, handle the influx of new kids from all the new developments? Uh, I will send you what the school district sent back. Um, if you send request, Jeff, uh, district one at myscaby.com, I'll send you all the documents, including the school district's comments on this approval, because they did weigh in and send something back. We're down to the wire. We got four left. We could do this. F dot, are they ever going to widen the bars bridge um, or restripe it? To make it safer, they are restriping it, uh, widening, widening it, or replacing it. That's that's a decision um, that's many many years down the line. Although I although I would argue it's desperately needed um, as the growth uh, calls for it. A stoplight at Doug Ford and Sorrento is coming. Longer turn lanes at Doug Ford and Sorrento. I would have to look at the sketches. Are they? Okay. Nope. But the traffic light is coming. As an active duty member station at NAS Pensacola, I'm happy to hear plans for more rentals in the lower crime areas near the base. There is not enough housing on base and officers are encouraged to work to look off base often for housing. Many are commuting to work 45 minutes. This will be a great option for military. Boy, I didn't even think about that. That's, and they have, BH, uh, they have housing allowances and things like that. They could afford the high rent, so that's good. I appreciate that comment. This is the final comment. I wanna thank you guys, your superstars, for staying this late. I wouldn't have stayed this long listening to me. Um, but, and I want anyone that wants to, to stand up and make a comment, I want to recognize you. That, that last time I got beat up, so I'm going to finish this and then we're going to do, we're going to do a rapid fire round, okay? The property behind uh, Winn-Dixie was donated by the Bars family for a kids recreation and a kids recreation only. Why can't Perdido build a YMCA or a recreation center like Orange Beach for children? I, I would support that. Um, this property belongs to the community. Uh, why not utilize it for that which it was intended for? Um, I don't know if Mike Rhodes is still here. Oh, he is. Ah. You'll take the card. Okay, he'll, he's going to take the card. I guess it's a, a detailed explanation, so uh, I'll leave that right here with, with Wes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Here's the answer to that question, the traffic question. So, so the peak hour is, is the p.m. peak hour. Um, that's afternoon travel. So they did. They did the, uh, the side street counts from 4 to... 5:45 to be able to catch her that peak hour in what, the PM. What about the more? Did they do any morning stuff? I didn't see morning. They stuff. they did not because again the, I, the the ITE guide that shows that the peak, the peak hour is in the PM. Okay, more so than the morning commute. Yes. Sir. Okay. Yep. See, that's something an engineer would know. I wouldn't know that. Okay, guys, we 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 don't have time to do the things all the things I wanted to do, but it, to me it's very important to to hear from anyone. Okay, this this gentleman has been so. Okay, come on down. Let me see that. No, 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 no. You gotta come up here. That way it's in the record. And that way I can turn the mic off. No, no, you're good. No, you're good, man. Just get in. Just do it quick so we can get all Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm wondering if it might not be a good idea to go ahead and 
and have a, uh, a another traffic study done, a more recent traffic study. Seems like throughout the evening I've been hearing traffic study, traffic study, and no one has any real answers. And there's been some pretty good points made concerning, you know, when they were studying, and even a point was made that okay. a lady that was studying was possibly fired from someplace else. Maybe it's time to look at another traffic okay. study with a little more attention to detail. Did you did you have a card? Do you have a card with your? Uh, I, uh, you filled one out. Yeah, but. Okay. Well, I look. Well, look. We can look into that. How much yeah. is it? How is that something we can look at? Is that good? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it sounds like the traffic study deal is a, is a big deal in this situation, and, and, and there's an awful lot of unanswered. Questions. See, I see a lot of agree cards coming up. Okay, thank you for that, sir. Okay, You're next, welcome. next. Anyone else? Just get in a line behind him. One at a time. Just get in a line. A traffic study. What would it do? Well, like, it would tell us. Things are going to go up. So, like, what, it, that's not going to change anything. Well, I think it would I give it's us. It's not your fault, sir. But. Well, no, and I, I appreciate your patience, man. I, I think what it would do is give us. It would give us the real data, and it would it would say whether or not this previous tra traffic study was worth the paper it was printed on. I mean, it could it could validate. Well, I mean, I, if it's not a real expensive thing to do, if it's not a real expensive thing to do, I would I would not I would not be opposed to doing it. I mean, do, uh, okay, just, if just if I can do it with my discretionary money and stand uh, out there on a Saturday afternoon on July fifth, oh, yeah. and, and that'll tell you everything you need to know. Well, yeah, no doubt about that. You know, but but or Friday it, it, night coming out of Fisherman's Corner when there's. But, 200 cars parking all over the place. But in, but in all fairness, and I agree with you, you would find a high traffic count, but if you go to your favorite restaurant Friday night at 6.30, you're going to have a two-hour wait, but Tuesday at 11, you get right in. See, so you can't build it to the highest capacity. Obviously, but. you have not been to Fishman's Corner. No, no, I, don't, I, don't, I have been there one time for lunch. I had a French dip. Okay, we're running out of time. One minute, go. you got to eat the mic or no one's going to hear you. i got a question for you, Philip. Okay, ask, yeah. All right, Holder, he's got a quick question for you. Holder, do you want to answer? You said you're having seven-month leases, but are they going to be allowed to sublet, and what happens if they all start turning up on Airbnb and VRBO? No, you can't sublet. No sublets. I mean, what happens if... You're terminated and kicked out of property. So somehow somebody's going to realize that somebody's trying to get on Airbnb. We do occupancy checks. We know... Every occupant in there, if you have an, if there is an uh, invalid occupant there, it screws up all of our water sewer bills, okay. and we immediately terminate. All right, there, that, that's the answer. we got to go quick because I want people to be, have their voice. Thank you for being here. Yes, ma'am. What's your question for the developer? Um, I know that there's going to be a lot of traffic going to the beaches, so you might want to consider a shuttle bus or something to take these residents to the beach okay. because if not, Johnson Beach closes it down if there's too much traffic. Absolutely. And there's not a whole lot of places you can go on the beach. Great. And we need to buy some land yes, to put up some public parking. It's it's in the works. And it's in the works. Good. I promise you, that's in the works. We need more parking. And, and I asked him. He knows. I, I mean, we're, you, don't, you cannot imagine how many people come to Perdido Key Beach no, I in the summer. I come, I come out here all the time. Okay. I love this place. So, I'm glad it's part of my district now. It's, 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 we're, we take bikes everywhere because there's too many people. Yes, ma'am. No, no, I appreciate you being here. Lenore. I have a question to hold um, We had heard something about a marina being part of this development. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, trouble. Oops, sorry. As part of the traffic studies, did you all also count, does the state require a uh, hurricane plan, hurricane evacuation plan? You've got to be able to handle excess traffic. The, uh, I'm getting a, I'm getting a nod to, to no, that's no not. state regulation on being able to. Maybe there should be. Maybe there should be. That makes sense to me. Yes, sir, you're recognized. Thank you for staying. That's okay. Uh, part of my question, I believe, was addressed by the woman before me about a marina. Part of your publication or your notice, public notice of this meeting was the apartments and a marina and dry storage. So I, I, the confusion might be. The dry storage, I think, was the confusion. He's going to have a, for people to park the boats. Well, the coincidence is there's a parcel of land sitting on the intercoastal, and there was talk for years about there being something. Let me, let me find out. Any yes. indication that there's going to be development there? I can find that out right now. Have, are they building a marina on that? Have we had any applications for? No, no, there's no applications. I think w w I saw that too, and it was confusing. It, it was about the dry storage at this, okay. this, yeah. But there is no applications for a marina right now. The staff, okay. thank you for being here. Yes, ma'am, you're recognized. Okay, there are going to be 536 parking spaces. Yes, ma'am. How do they come up with only 160 cars added? 
Oh, no, go ahead. I've read the, I've read the report. Yes, ma'am. Last night. Yes, ma'am. He'll answer. That's just at the peak hour. So that's one hour of traffic, one, 170 okay. cars so that you're referring to. We're people that are living in a luxury apartment and making quite a bit of money. Yes, ma'am. They're going to have to travel to work. That's, that's kind of, that doesn't make any sense. And, I, and, I, and I'll be honest with you. I, I agree with you. And I thought that number was really low, too. But when you look at the way they generate the numbers, they look at the number of folks who are retired. They also look at multimodal transportation, people that walk, people that will, I'm sorry, that thing keeps. Uh, uh, understood. Yeah, and but, I, I kind of looked at all that too, and it still does not make any sense. Yeah. I, it still seems like the numbers were fudged. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm, I, I, I hope I hope they weren't. If they were, if they were, I, they did it without me knowing. Yes, sir. I just want to say uh, I appreciate both of here. I know a lot of people don't. We're military. Um, we had to buy our house because we couldn't find housing for rentals. Oh. And my wife is uh, higher ranked in the military. Um, so she's an officer. So there's a lot of things that we like just can't get in either on base because we're too high ranked and a lot of people forget one of your largest uh, people who uh, employ here are military. Yes. And people forget there are military, it's just not people in residence for Dito. Most of your, every time you go to like a restaurant, it's most of your military people there, not your local residents. And that's why we forget the military is here. No, thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Yes, sir, you're recognized. Thank you for your patience and staying. Yeah, it's a reiteration on the public spaces for the area, precisely the, the beach accesses. So the current ones, the two and three, I know we have the new one that's been open, but two and three are basically just taken up by the people who live in the newer developments just driving to the beach. So there's not enough spots for those people. In addition, the public accesses are in shanty. The bathrooms don't work, they have porta potties, they're trash, the parking lots are all messed up, there's no lines painted anywhere. And I'm just wondering if there's any, I know you've touched on it, but I wonder if there's any in the future near improvements to our public space. Yes, and there will be. And, and I will tell you the, the, sad, the sad thing about those uh, public access points were those very nice restrooms that were built, vandalized over and over and over, toilets broken sinks ripped off the wall that's why they're locked if you look one of the first things i did was we put a sign on there and it says this is closed for repairs due to ongoing vandalism uh I, it's kind of like the littering thing i don't know people have no shame anymore we, we try and do something nice we put toilets out there uh nice changing facilities and people go in there and dump full rolls of paper towel down there they did it at beulah park i built i built a hundred fifty thousand dollar restroom at the park so people wouldn't have to use the, the restrooms and what do they do they broke the sink they put firecrackers down the toilet well, here's, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. Can we do a better job out there? I think so. I mean, I don't like the looks of it either. But, um, but the, I, I don't know. I don't. But I can tell you, my eye is on that issue. I've been out there and looked at it. And we're going we're gonna to increase the size of those. I can understand, like, the local residents around those going, this place looks like a dump. I don't think it's next to my condo. And I'm like, yeah, I understand. So I I'm like, what's the solution to that? Well, um, that's a good question. I just got here, but watch me. I'm a solutions guy. I'm going to find a way. And I'm Michael Rhodes, maybe let's put our heads together on that. Thank you for being here, sir. Yes, sir, you're recognized. We might just time this perfectly. By the way, everyone has to be out of here in four minutes. <laughs> sorry. Uh, sorry. Yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Sean Hennessy. I'm the yes, sir. lead maintenance uh, and grounds gentleman for um, the Point Churches down here. I know there's been a lot of talk about uh, Monterey Avenue and everything else. That, that intersection there, we would actually like to partner, or is there a way we could partner to get onto the pole or any of the lighting that uh, AMPLO is going to do or through ECUA uh, in order to get that back area lit up some more because it's a safety issue for our church and our parking lot. We currently rent 10 lights now and where that back dumpster is on Monterey, okay. uh, we like to, so who do I talk to about that? This is, this is the guy right here. Okay. So we just thank made you. a connection. Yeah, just get his card. Yes, sir, you're recognized. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for being here. Another Gray Lagoon and uh, any consideration, consideration taken to the traffic at uh, the intersection with the, uh, they open up the basic and the boys will practice Is that going to generate so much traffic coming in from the key from all the vacation? It's, just, it's unbelievable. That, yeah. that, I, I think that's been looked at before, but I, I can check the status of that. Chris, that's something we need to check. And maybe that needs to be coordinated with the sheriff's office. I've heard that before. Um, I will have Chris uh, look at that and we will ask the sheriff's office. That's something we'd have to coordinate with the sheriff and with the base, the Navy base on that. Um, they're, I think they're, I think they're leaving town for the winter, but yes, sir, you yeah. recognize you'll be the final speaker. Uh, yeah, this is it. I'll look at My, look at Perdido Key. 
Yes, sir. Probably 4,000 residents. The I don't condo, know. Mm -hmm. he's putting 325 in. There's 600. Well, originally it was supposed to be 600 in Lost Key. Now it's going to be 690. Then you got the rest of the condos on the beach. Mm -hmm. Every one of these, you're talking about thousands of dollars every year going into your coffers. Mm -hmm. And you're standing there tonight saying, well, we're going to look at it. We're going to look at it. Yeah. Well, the residents are tired of looking. No, we I, want you to spend some money. Okay. I send you pictures and emails. But I am sick and tired of not you not fixing Don Carlos. Don, oh, you're the Don Carlos yes. guy. Okay. Yes, I've been there. I mean, the potholes have been here for five now, we, now, uh, in fairness, though, now be fair. Now be, now be fair, though. For the first, the first two that you sent, I sent the crew out, and you responded and said, "Oh, thanks, they fixed it." Well, you only fixed the half. <laughs> I'll fix the other half. I promise. But I mean, as long know, as you stop yelling at me. You got the bar here. Yes, sir. People are coming in from out of town, mm -hmm. going here on vacation. We want them to think. I'm with you. To think they're in, in Honduras or somewhere. I mean. <laughs> Uh, well, believe me, I, I'm with you on this. But give us some money, man. Okay, we're all right. Tired of, we don't want to, we're tired of you giving money to Navy Federal. Yes, sir. Yeah, right? no, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. We want our money. All right. M message, message received. Okay. I want to thank everyone for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And I will do these again, and I'll do the best I can. Look, we can't solve it all, but thank you.